And I uh, would like to recognize the presence of uh, Senator Aimee, even though she's on the phone, all the way from Ilocos Norte. Morning, Senator Aimee. And uh, before we continue, let me recognize our uh, committee secretary, <coughs> acknowledge our esteemed guests and colleagues for the day. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. For our hearing today, we would like the, to acknowledge the virtual presence of our resource persons. First, from the, uh, the members from the House of Representatives, we have Deputy Speaker Rufus Rodriguez of the 2nd District of Cagayan de Oro City, Deputy Speaker Deogracias Victor D.V. Sabaliano from the 1st District of Ilocos Sur, Deputy Speaker Christine Singson Nihan from the 2nd District of Ilocos Sur. We also have Deputy Speaker Wesley Gachalian from the 1st District of Valenzuela City. We also have with us Rep. Lorna Bautista Bandigan from the Lone District of Davao Occidental. Good morning, ma'am. Representative Carl Nicolas Cari from the 5th District of Leyte. Repres Representative Maximo Dalog Jr. from the Lone Representative of Lone Representative of the District of Mount, Mount Province, Rep. Mark Go from the Lone District of Baguio City, and Rep. Florida Rida Robes from the Lone District of San Jose del Monte City. From our, from our executive agencies, we have with us Dr. Estela L. Carino, the Regional Director of CAR, Ms. Mary Caroline B. Verano, the Schools Division Superintendent of Baguio City, Dr. Meliton Zurbano, the OIC Schools Division Superintendent of Valenzuela City. Dr. Jenlyn Rose B. Corpus, Schools Division Superintendent of Quezon City, together with Engineer Mark Porter Padilla, the Assistant Schools Division Superintendent. From the, the, from the Region 1 of DepEd, we have with us Attorney Rhea Joy Carbonell, the Legal Officer. We also have with us Mr. George M. Reinante, the Schools Division Superintendent of Locos Sur, Dr. May B. Eklar, the Regional Director of Region 3, Dr. Merlina P. Cruz, the OIC Schools Division Superintendent of San Jose del Monte City, Dr. Gilbert Sadsa, the Regional Director of Region 5, together with Mr. Roy Banas, the Chief Education Supervisor of the Policy Planning and Research Division. We also have with us Mr. Jose L. Doncilio, the Schools Division Superintendent of Sorsogan. Mr. Raul B. Agban, the OIC Schools Division Superintendent from the City of Baybay. Dr. Isabelita M. Borres, the Regional Director of Region 9. Dr. Maria Liza R. Tabilon, the Schools Division Superintendent of Sambuanga del Norte. Dr. Alan G. Fornazo, the Regional Director of Region 11, together with Assistant Regional Director Maria Ines C. Asuncion and Ms. Janelito Gen S. Atilio, the Chief of Quality Assurance Division. We also have with us Dr. Lorenzo E. Mendoza, the OIC Schools Division Superintendent of Davao Occidental, together with Ms. Janet R. Octura. From the Department of Tourism, we have with us Attorney Viveca Lopez, the Supervising Tourism Oper Operations Officer. From the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, we have with us Mr. Lawrence Charles E. Salazar, the Assistant Chief of the Policy Plan Formulation and Programming Division of the Head of the Cultural Heritage Section. From the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, we have with us Ms. Christine Donuan, Senior History Researcher and, and Architect Maria Luisa Valerio. From the Tourism Edu Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, or TIEZA, we have with us Attorney Maria Salve Aure M. Carillo, Attorney 3 of the Legal Services Division, Legal Department. From the Department of Energy, we have with us Attorney Don G. Villanueva, the Chief of the Renewable Energy Legal Services Division. For our ch local chief ex executives or mayors, we have with us the representative from Mar Paracelis Mountain Province, Attorney Christian Van Talawek, the Municipal Administrator. We also have with us Mayor Darwin C. Estraniero of Tabuk City, Kalinga. From the office of the City Mayor of Baguio, we have with us uh, Councillor Filian Luis Alan, Councillor Maria Mylan Geranon, and Councillor Francisco Ted. Uh, From the Labasan uh, Sambuanga Norte Local Government, we have with us Mr. Herbon Abaya, the OIC Sangguniang Bayan Secretary and Principal Cherry Ampayo Labasan of 
principal charity ang tayo lang ako sa basa from the local government of San Vicente Ilocos we have with us Mayor Jose Cita Tabante III from the local government of Cebu Coast and Puerto del Norte the office of the mayor is represented by Engineer Ricardo L. Henturales, the Municipal Planning and Development Coordinator, Mr. Walter Navarro, and Principal Ayang Aripin of Cebuco National High School. From the local government of Cagayan de Oro City, Misamis Oriental, we have with us Mr. Hilarion N. Bakli, City Local Environment and Natural Resources Office. And for our other stakeholders, we have with us from Phil Hydro Association, Ms. Gertrude Trixie Roque and Attorney Alvin Balagbad. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also recognize the presence of uh, Senator uh, Nancy Binay. I saw Senator Binay uh, presence earlier. So we have a full schedule today. We're, uh, top, top, uh, we will be tackling 21 uh, local bills um, with the uh, indulgence and permission of um, Kong Rufus and Deputy uh, uh, Speaker um, uh, Divi. Uh, we will um, uh, talk about the heritage zones at the end of the school bills uh, because this uh, needs uh, a little bit of a discussion. So uh, with your permission and your indulgence uh, uh, from Kong uh, Rufus and Deputy Speaker uh, D.V. Sevleano, uh, we will talk about uh, the two heritage zones at the end. So uh, you can uh, relax first, Kong Rufus. Baka mag-breakfast muna ho kayo or uh, mag -gym muna. And then uh, I think we'll uh, take uh, probably an hour and a half to two hours to talk about all of the schools. The schools demand are ministerial in nature. Uh, we're just going to uh, talk about its uh, completeness in terms of documentation and requirements, but uh, it should be ministerial in nature. We just want to put it on record. So, um, uh, so with that, uh, we can uh, probably talk about the heritage zone around 11 o'clock uh, uh, Kong Rufus and uh, Deputy Speaker DB. So mag-relax muna ho kayo so that you won't uh, stay online for a long time. So with that, uh, we'll start off with uh, renaming of schools because this is uh, the easiest among the uh, local school bills. So we'll uh, now... Uh, We'll now tackle House Bill 7769. Uh, this is the renaming of uh, San Manuel National High School. And uh, we want to call on, uh, or seven, sorry, House Bill 7769. Uh, let me just read the title. An act changing the name of San Manuel High School in Barangay San, Ma San Manuel, City of San Jose del Monte, Province of Bulacan, to San Manuel National High School. So with that, we'll call on um, Congresswoman uh, Robes uh, to sponsor the bill. And then later on, we'll call upon the regional director and then later on, Dep and National. So uh, we just want to uh, go through this uh, quite quickly. Uh, we'll start off with the sponsoring uh, uh, legislator so that we'll have full appreciation of the uh, intent of the bill. So we call on uh, uh, Congresswoman uh, Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, our fellow colleagues in Congress and, of course, our dear friends in, in the Senate. Um, seeing this bill pass the floors of our Congress in itself an achievement, more so that I am in front of this August Hall presenting to you a bill that would cement an institution for the youth, the teachers, as well as the non-teaching teacher, as well as the non-teaching personnel of San Manuel. This House Bill number 7769 is not simply about a change in the name of a public school, but to provide our high schoolers an institution that would forever be a monument of a learning institution in our city. And let us all remember that our population mostly are relocatees from the national capital region and other parts of the country. 
whom we all wanted to house and give hope. This bill, when you, my dear colleagues, would pass it into a Republic Act, would further strengthen the will of our people in uplifting their lives, continue our sustainability through good education, and further our enthusiasm in keeping our city a rising city. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, and I'm really requesting for the, for the passage of this bill. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Congrida. We now uh, call on the regional uh, director, Dr. Uh, May Eklar. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, your honors, and uh, to everyone. Uh, magandang umaga po uh, sa ating lahat. Mr. Chair, may I please be allowed to give a brief uh, backgrounder, an explanation to the support of the Department of Education Region 3 on the matter of the proposed HB number 7769 introduced by Honorable Florida Robes and Honorable Romanti Romulo. Uh, San Manuel High School is located at the city of San Jose del Monte, Bulacan under DepEd Region 3. For DepEd's old record, San Manuel High School, which offers regular high school uh, offering grade 7 to 10, was established in May 2014. For fiscal year 2020 to 2021, it has an enrollment of 590 with a total teacher requirement of 28. However, based on teacher inventory of the said school, only one teacher has a plantilla item in San Manuel National High School. 14 are borrowed teachers from other schools funded by the Special Education Fund. Through a city ordinance, number 2020-050-10, and in compliance to the provisions of DEP and Order number, nine, uh, number 29, I mean, series of 2011, which is consistent with letter E and F of section 13 of the local government uh, code, uh, and I quote, renaming of a public school shall be made only upon the recommendation of the local school board concerned while those of public hospitals or health centers and other health facilities shall be made by the local health board concerned, unquote. San Manuel High School was renamed San Manuel National High School on October 19, 2020, and uh, the Deped Region 3 approved its renaming and changed the name of San, Man San Manuel High School in the DepEd's Basic Education Information System to San Manuel National High School with school ID 307514 in December or on December 16, 2020. However, further scrutiny of the submitted city ordinance to so the DepEd Regional Office 3, it was found out that there is a specific provision uh, under Section 3 of said ordinance, which provides that, and I quote, this ordinance shall take effect upon legislative approval, unquote. Therefore, based on the cited premise, DepEd uh, Dep Region 3 interposes no objection on the renaming of San Manuel High School to San Manuel National High School. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Maybe also Maybe here uh, will be he then will be represented Dep at national. Sir, as of now po, hindi pa po nakalag in yung uh, director natin. We're still waiting po for them. Bakit sila late? Kinontact ko na rin po, sir, para po pumasok na po sila. Pero the, their liaison officers po, such as uh, servants po from DepEd, is already logged in. They're monitoring na po. But yung director po who will be speaking for DepEd Central Office, hindi pa po nakalag in. Yeah, but 920 na and then we have 21 bills to talk about, so they should be on time. We told them in advance to be on time because uh, we have a lot of things to talk about. Yes, um, who, who can speak in behalf of 
Med National. Uh, Mr. Chair, probably we could call on Yusek Ton Somali. I'm going to try to call him so we who could give us um, um, an insight about this bill. Hold on, Mr. Chair. Error? Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, yes uh, Senator Nancy. Siguro para para hindi ma-delay yung discussion natin, baka pwede isang ano na lang, kumbaga isang uh, opinion na lang from Dep Ed National on all the re uh, renaming of bills. Yung mga ano, renaming of schools habang wala pa sila. Sir, sir, Mr. Vince Panaon of Dep. Dire kita maka ano sen kanila ano participate. Dire kita maka pati. Um, since we're still waiting for uh, DepEd National, Kong Rita, with your permission, we'll just um, call on the other uh, schools and then uh, uh, um, we'll we'll uh, uh, accede to the suggestion of uh, Senator B9 to have a blanket uh, reaction na lang later uh, when DepEd comes in. Because DepEd, we requested DepEd to certify on the completeness so that on record we will have uh, DepEd National certifying the completeness of its uh, uh, requirements. So with your kind indulgence, we already, we're already contacting DepEd National to uh, participate ASAP. Uh, let's uh, give them a few minutes. Yes, Mr. Chair, I agree with that. And I'd like to uh, make my ma ma manifest my motion that I agree also with Senator Nancy. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, Rita. We will now uh, tackle House Bill 7998. The title is An Act Changing the Name of Paracelis National High School. Parangay Poblacion, Municipality of Paracelis, Mountain Province, to Serapio Gawan National High School. So we call on uh, uh, Congressman uh, Maximo Dalag Jr. to uh, sponsor the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me, Po? Mr. Chair. Yes, Po. Uh, you're coming in late. Pati lakas lang po yung volume. Sir? sir, can you can you hear me, sir? We can hear you, but very uh, soft. Po. Uh, barely, we can barely hear you. But uh, can you make your your um, volume louder? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Sorry, po. Now, Mr. Chair. Ah, pwede na po. Lakasan niyo na lang po yung boses o ninyo. I mean, uh, hello? Hello? Yes, yes. Hello? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, to Senator uh, Tansi Binay, Senator Aimee Marcos, uh, my fellow colleagues, uh, this House bill uh, is uh, to change the name of Paracelis National High School to Serapio Gawan National High School. Serapio Gawan is the donor of the 
lot where the Paraceles National High School is permanently located. Uh, and in recognition of Mr. Gawan's generosity, altruism, and his priceless uh, contribution to the education of the people of eastern part of Mountain Province, particularly the municipality of Paraceles, it is but proper to change the name of Paraceles National High School to Serapio Gawan National High School in addition to the in addition to the renaming of the school, it will give sense. It will give a sense of history and significance. In view of the foregoing, I, approval of the bill is earnestly sought, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Kong. Uh, we also we are also calling on the regional director, uh, regional director Estela Carino, ma'am. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. So this is Stella Carino from uh, DepEdCar. Uh, the school existed as uh, Paracelis uh, National High School for years. And um, the only doc document that we have been uh, waiting for uh, had already arrived. And so we have this as our um, recommendation. So... Uh, Dep Edgar interposes no objection to the renaming of uh, Paraceles National High School into Serapio Gawa National High School. However, it is recommended that the old name, which has been sanctified by usage by, usage by the residents of the community, be placed underneath the new name in the signage. Uh, otherwise, um, we recommend for the... Uh, use or approval of the said deal, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, to Senator Binay and Senator Marcos, any questions? Kung wala ni ma'am po, and uh, to Kong Dalog, uh, again, we uh, apologize for uh, we have to defer the approval of this for now. Uh, we're still waiting for DepEd National to uh, join in, no? but because as a matter of process, uh, DepEd National will uh, certify on the completeness. But we're already reaching out to them uh, to uh, join in the uh, uh, hearing. So we'll just give it a few minutes. Wait, Mr. Chair. Oh, dito na pala ho. Uh, si Yusek Komali is ready with us to... Um, to uh, manifest uh, DepEd's national position on the two renaming of schools. So we recognize you, Sek Omani. You, Sek? You, Sek Omani. Sige po, he's still joining. So while joining, we'll, uh, we'll uh, go to the separation of schools. This is um, the second batch. Mr. Chair? Yes. yes. Uh, just for clarification, um, with this re renaming, yung sa San Jose del Monte, parang meron siyang cost implication, di ba? It's not just simple renaming compared to the one uh, sa Paracelis. Tama po ba? Uh, may we uh, request uh, either Kong Rida or uh, the uh, regional director to uh, uh, to respond to the questions? Um, first, I'd like to say that there is actually an implication in terms of cost. Kasi nga po, but there are a lot of um, a lot of teachers who are borrowed from various schools also. So it may add actually on that. Pero... Yung mga teachers, sumisweldo talaga sila in not, not in their proper venue. So, yung hiraman, kasi nga, wala talaga siyang, although he, merong item, pero talagang wala siyang space na sinasabi natin sa edukasyon. So, renaming the school, meron siyang actually uh, school ID number, so mapupondohan naman siya. Kaya lang, kulang pa rin talaga pagdating sa teacher's item. A little of it, pagdating sa mga JA sa mga susunod na panahon. I think RD May could would answer it more and better. And you said to Asumalis with us, because I have consulted these things to them. At yung plantilla position, isang alang talaga. So 
mag-aad talaga. Unlike before na noon talaga puro borrowed June teachers, uh, principal hiniram sa ibang schools. Pero once na ito ay maging okay through a legislative um, approval, kasi city ordinance lang siya, I think everything will be okay in terms of allocations. Kasi nasa GAA naman siya because of the school ID. I, I, I don't know if I'm right, but I think this is the proper thing that I have said. Mention school ID 307-3075-14. Pag may school ID kasi, automatic na lalagyan ng pondo. Kaya lang, maliit lang. Pero ngayon, dahil may legislative ano, approval na tayo, if ever, eh, mas mabibigyan nito ng pansin. Yeah. Pansin, Nancy? Hindi na isa lang ang plantilya position doon sa skwelahan. Eh, alam naman natin sa laki ng population ng San Jose del Monte. At hindi naman ito, uh, kumbaga, first class uh, na ata ang San Jose del Monte, di ba? Yes. Classification. For you to have a school na isa lang ang plantilya position, eh, talagang uh, parang hindi ka tanggap-tanggap. Kaya, Mr. Chair, I support that Aside from the renaming, eh, kung kailangan ng additional funding for this school, I think uh, we should uh, make sure in the next uh, uh, budget season, eh, talagang mabigyan ng kaukulang pondo itong national high school na ito. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman, and salamat, Congressman Robbins. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Nancy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, hindi lang, uh, Sen. Nancy, hindi lang to first class city, pwede na highly urbanized city to Mas malaki na kaysa sa Valenzuela ang San Jose. <laughs> yes, and our mentor is your brother. Alam mo naman yan ever since. Basta yung dagat siya yan, he works with art. Talagang they're best friends in terms of progress, lahat ng, lahat ng pwede. And at the same time, I'd like to thank, of course, um, yung NHA family na talagang pushing on this. Kasi yung, yung area talaga na San Manuel, um, high school, eh, talaga nakatabi ang mga inilipat ng ating NHA family ng araw pa hanggang sa ngayon. So with this, maraming maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, and, and of course, Senator Nancy, Senator Amy is here. Oh, nandito na pala si Yusek Tons, ang katulong po ng mga mahihirap sa lungsod ng San Jose. Mr. Chairman? Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, then, pero din sa uh, yung key Congressman Dalog, simple renaming lang, no? Kasi National High School na siya, eh. Tama po ba? Akong Dalong and uh, or Ma'am Carino, you may respond. Yeah, I'm sorry, you don't get the bump this time. Uh, yes, um, I um, kung da da dalog natin. I, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I would understand it as uh, the, the school, which is a big school and with uh, enough uh, personnel as of now, and with buildings, um, the school will remain in its main campus, which is located in Barangay Poblacion, Municipality of Paraceles. And um, as of the time I went, which is just a few months ago, uh, the school is uh, with enough buildings and enough uh, personnel. So the need for an increase in its uh, in um, in its uh, allotment fund allotment would be necessary if there will be increase in enrollment or additional buildings. But as of now, uh, the school is uh, all right with its uh, allocation, Mr. Chair. Your Honor. Akong dato, please. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. So we call on uh, Yusek Omali uh, to uh, certify on the completeness of uh, uh, House Bill 7769. This is the uh, renaming of school in San Jose del Monte. Yusek? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We do certify and confirm that uh, it has uh, satisfied all the requirements uh, provided under our uh, Deped Order Number 40 series of 2014, which is the applicable uh, deputy issue on the matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah. po ako ng paumanin, Mr. Chair, ha? nagkaroon po na, meron po kami po dapat na a-attend na iba. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we apologize, Mr. Chair, kung wala po sa central office na nakadalo po kaagad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. 
And also, the next one is on House Bill 7998. The same thing on its completeness. Yes, um, Mr. Chair. We, we confirm, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Yusek. Now we go on the, uh, the next batch, which is the separation of schools. And uh, we will now uh, tackle House Bill number 5363, an act separating the Lawa National High School, Nueva Villa Extension in Barangay Lawa, Municipality of Marcelino, Province of Davao Occidental, from the Lawa National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Corona A. Cabanilla National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. So we call on uh, representative. Mr. Chair? Yes? Uh, Sorry, at the risk of uh, interrupting your flow, Mr. Chair, um, I just wanted to know if you uh, needed an omnibus motion for uh, both renaming of schools, given that uh, we extend our full support to my party mate and uh, co cordillera and Maxi Dialogue, as well as uh, Rita Robes, which uh, uh, clearly her uh, crowded situation was uh, very much our fault, my parents having sent so many people to San Jose back in the 70s through the 80s at uh, masipag sila, mga anak ng mga anak. So, eto nga. So, I'd just like to move with that uh, since uh, DepEd has already certified its completion that uh, we uh, pass these bills from the lower house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I mean, for reminding me uh, with that, I... Uh... I apologize for forgetting to <laughs> approve the endorsement. So uh, with that motion, uh, any second, Senator Nancy? Can. Uh, with that uh, motion, seconded by uh, Senator Nancy, we now uh, approve House Bill 7769 and uh, House Bill 7998. Mr. Chair, pwede po ako magpasalamat in one minute. Maraming salamat po sa lahat-lahat. At syempre, I'm pretty sure lahat po ng 590 nakagruan ng San Manuel National High School ay masayang-masaya ngayong araw na ito. Congratulations po sa ating lahat and thank you po for giving this very good break to our district. Senator Nancy, Senator Amy, and of course... Senator Winga Chalian, God bless you all and to our fellow colleagues in Congress. Mabukay po tayo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kong uh, uh, Rida. And regards uh, kay Art. Mr. Chairman? Yes, matutuwa <laughs> I think yung mga tapos na, they can be excused from the... You can uh, be excused na. Hearing. Yes, definitely. Ayan, Kong Max. Thank you again from San Thank you, thank you. Thank you from Mayor R. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, we now call on uh, Congresswoman Lorna Bautista Bandigan. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, and to my uh, colleagues in Congress, especially. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to manifest my... Actually, Mr. Chair, this is, I have actually five... Uh, there are four more bills to be tackled this morning. And uh, pwede bang, Mr. Chair... Uh, Iano ko na lahat? Can I ask permission to that? Hello, Mr. Chair. Ma'am, sorry po. Hello. Actually, yeah. Mr. Chair, may apat pa ako. Okay. Sunod-sunod. In the category okay. nitong uh, separation, uh, yung, ano, yung separation. Ah, okay. Pwede, okay. Ko bang ma pwede ko na bang basahin na lang po lahat? Ah... Uh... Let me just ano po, let me just uh, read for the record those bills and then you can make an omnibus sponsorship 
so we can cut time. Yes, please, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, please. With your indulgence, ma'am. So that's House Bill five three six three, and then we yes. will now uh, consider House Bill five three six four. Let me just read the yes. title: and I'm separating the Don Marcelino High National High School. The Lupan Extension in Barangay the Lupan Municipality of Don Marcelino Province of Davao Occidental from the Don Marcelino National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Ernesto Balindan Sumbo National High School and appropriating funds therefore. And then we will also consider at the same time House Bill number 5365 and act separating the Mariano Peralta National High School, Sangay Extension in Barangay Sangay Municipality of Malita, Province of Davao Occidental, from the Mariano Peralta National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Ernesto Lopez National High School and appropriating funds therefore. And lastly, uh, House Bill Number 5367, an act separating the uh, Basiawan National High School, Malagsom Extension in Barangay, Buhangin Municipality of Malita, Province of Davao Occidental, from the Basiawan National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Buhangin National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. So, once again, we call on Representative about, uh, Lorna Bautista Bantiga. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for that uh, favor. Mr. Chair, there's one more, the fifth and the last bill is the spread of the <laughs> Is that also in the separation, uh, Kong? Uh, I think in the establishment, I think, Mr. Chair. Establishment. Yeah, yeah. Establishment, so, uh, think, Mr. Chair. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, tackle the establishment yeah, yeah. Uh, later on. So we'll do away first with the separation. Yeah, okay, okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, again, uh, I would like to manifest that uh, my explanatory note will serve as my sponsorship speech. And uh, maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, and good day to everyone. Yes, thank you, uh, Kong Lorna. We'll uh, insert your uh, uh, sponsorship speech into the records as part of your... Uh, um, as part of your uh, manifestation. Uh, but we, at the same time, will call on the different regional, well, there's only one regional director. Um, so we yes. call on uh, Dr. Alan Parnazo for his uh, comments and manifestation. Uh, good morning uh, to our honorable uh, chair, uh, Sharon Katsalian, and uh, members of the uh, uh, committee and uh, earlier uh, with our very uh, supportive uh, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Lorna Bautista Bandigan, who I happened to pay my courtesy yesterday. And uh, as a uh, statement from DepEd uh, Regional Office number 11, uh, we strongly support and have uh, provided information. In fact, uh, as early as uh, 2017, I've already provided initial support in the establishment planning prep uh, preparation for the school uh, with a very committed local government unit and uh, legislative sponsor. Uh, therefore, we felt it a very strong uh, coming of uh, uh, efforts and uh, 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 strong collaboration to also extend our <laughs> extend our uh, 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 unqualified support uh, for the establishment of the said school and uh, our uh, from the separation of the said school from its uh, mother school. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Senator uh, Will. <laughs> Yes, 
Thank you, uh, Yusuf Komali. Uh, may we uh, hear your manifestation on the completeness on the four bills that were mentioned? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We confirm uh, satisfaction of our, uh, again, Depend Order Number 40 Series of 2014, specifically Item 6, A.2. Uh, uh, of the uh, with respect to the requirements on the separation of schools, uh, House Bill numbers five three six three, five three six four, five three six five, and five three six seven have all satisfied uh, our requirements under said DO, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for hello, po. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for your. Uh manifestation and uh, before we make an omnibus uh, motion uh, Senator Nancy let's uh, complete first the separation so that we will have one big omnibus uh, uh, motion later on so we now uh, we are now um, we're now tackling House Bill 7992 an act separating the Naning National High School, Mosimos Extension in Barangay Dupag, City of Tabuk, Province of Kalinga from Naning National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Dupag National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. So we call on uh, Representative Alan Jesse Mangawa. Um, I, I, I think um, I think Congressman Jesse is not around, but uh, may I just sponsor on his behalf, uh, being his counterpart in the Senate? Apparently, he's already online. Said, uh, uh, okay, okay, all right. Apparently, uh, but uh, let me again call on uh, Rep. Uh, Manawang. Uh, Kong, Kong Allen. Uh, Sen I mean, uh, he's he was here earlier, no? so actually, he's here. Oh, very good. Okay, this seems to be your Cordillera Day, and dami namin taga Norte. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ilocano. He's here. Oh, yeah, he's here, Pop. Ah, uh, very good, very good. Malen. Mr. Chairman? Yes? How about we make connection issue si Kong? Baka we can move muna to the next school? Oh, sige. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Also, we save time. Uh, but he's here, he's logged in, and he's chatting with um, our staff. We'll just uh, fix his technical issues. So we will now consider House Bill 7994, an act separating the Baguio City National High School, Fort Del Pilar Annex in Barangay, Fort Del Pilar, Baguio City, from Baguio City National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as the Fort Del Pilar National High School. Full and appropriating funds, therefore. So uh, I can see uh, Kong Mark go here with us. Kong, good morning. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to sponsor these uh, two bills, if I may be allowed, uh, instead of just uh, one. And we are. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, there are two bills. Pala, no? Let me yeah. uh, the other one. That's House Bill. 7995, an act separating the Baguio City National High School, Hillside Annex in Barangay, Hillside, Baguio City, from the Baguio City National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as the Hillside National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. So we have two bills on hand, um, Kong Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Wynn uh, Gatsalian. Senator Aimee Marcos, uh, Senator Nancy Binay, uh, our uh, Deputy Speaker Rufus Rodriguez, uh, Deputy Speaker Wes Gatsalian, 
Kong Rida Robes, uh, Kong uh, D.B. Sabiliano, uh, our councillors from the city of Baguio, Councillor Mylene Ranon, Councillor Pacaoy Ortega, Secretary, Under Secretary uh, uh, Tomasito Omali, uh, our regional director of CAR, uh, Stella Carino, other resource persons, friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, enrollment at the Baguio City National High School has reached the 9,000 mark. In order to cater to more than 9,000 students from all over the city of Baguio, several facilities of high schools were augmented with two school annexes, one of which is the Port del Pilar Annex, located at about 10 kilometers away from the mother school. The Port del Pilar Annex uh, caters to more than 900 students and operates with a one functional library and 16 classrooms housed at five buildings. However, six of these classrooms and two of these buildings are actually just makeshift. The main campus and the annexes are uh, governed by the same uh, administrative personnel and the teachers in the annex school uh, is uh, basically uh, support uh, is actually uh, mail borrowed from the mother high school. As we look forward to the end of this pandemic and to bringing our learners back to school, this representation is hopeful that through this bill we can cater to more students from their na surrounding neighborhoods without sacrificing the quality of education received by the students and the learning atmosphere that should facilitate efficient transfer, absorption, and retention of knowledge by converting the Fort Del Pilar Annex to an independent national high school, students from surrounding barangays would be given better access to a national high school and the mother school, as well as other overly populated schools in Baguio would be relieved of the undue burden. The conversion, therefore, would also decentralize leadership, management, and supervision of the school, thereby facilitating more efficient services to the public. It would allow also the former annex to manage its own MOOE and establish its own plantilla of personnel for ease of managing staff as an independent school. As we have learned from the ongoing pandemic, an overly cramped environment is a hotbed for infections and other contagious diseases. And we want to be able to keep our learners safe. And when the time comes that we can allow face-to-face -face learning, we want, uh, want to raise the confidence of parents in sending their children to school, knowing that they are returning to safe spaces. Apart from the physical facilities, very important that the Fort Del Pilar Annex, as an independent high school, is able to actually hire competent faculty members and establish student-teacher ratio more conducive to learning, either by face-to-face -face or distance learning modalities. As Baguio City's population balloons continuously, being an educational and commercial hub in Northern Luzon, I implore upon my fellow legislators to help ensure that the high schoolers of Baguio continue to receive quality and accessible education, hence approval of this bill is earnestly requested. I also would like to uh, ask for the approval of this committee on the conversion of the school annex, uh, Hillside Annex, as a regular high school uh, in the city of Baguio. If we note here, Hillside Annex is about three kilometers away from the mother school and operate with a one functional library and five class classrooms and only nine teachers with 772 students. Similar with the Fort Del Pilar Annex, the teachers at the Hillside Annex are uh, merely borrowed from the mother high school and with limited facilities and teacher items, catering to more students and ensuring that the learning and welfare of the students is uncompromised it's a real struggle for this small annex. But this representation knows that this, that the annex at Hillside, as well as with the Fort Del Pilar, has such genuine potential for growth 
and excellence if only be given sufficient support as an independent high school. Hence, approval of this bill is also earnestly sought. Thank you very much at uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Mr. Chair? Yes, and I mean? Yes, uh, yes, I uh, filed a counterpart bill for uh, uh, Congressman Mark Goh's uh, conversion bills and it's uh, Senate Bill 1610, so we can take that off our agenda. And uh, truly, given the challenges posed by uh, the uh, mountain landscape of the Cordillera, um, the robust internet that we have been counting on has uh, never taken place, and uh, the expansion, therefore, of these schools is urgently um, requested. Thank you very much. On uh, Miss Estela Carino again for her uh, manifestation on the two bills. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair, and good morning also to our good Congressman. So, as stated by Congressman Go for uh, Fort Del Pilar Annex, the annex of Baguio City, it had existed already for. Uh, many years actually the first year of existence is in 1968 and it caters not only to the barangays uh, or yeah sitios of Baguio city but it also caters to the barangays uh, located at the uh, Forluacan, which are parts of Penguet. and um as to the uh, submission of some uh, documents they have already submitted all the documents uh, and uh, we are just waiting for one, but uh, it is to be submitted. But as to the existence of teachers and um, uh, school buildings, Congressman Go and I went uh, to the new site and uh, it is really uh, uh, high time that it will be separated so that uh, uh, it will go to its new site and then thereby serve many uh, students. The existing teachers of uh, Fort Del Pilar Annex since they have been there and uh, may not be uh, utilized by uh, Baguio City, Maine, no, may still be with uh, with Fort Del Pilar uh, school, high school, even if it will be separated. So as to, uh, as to uh, budget, of course, uh, there will be uh, some needs, but uh, it will be more of uh, the buildings. So... Uh, uh, Deb Edgar interposes no objection for the separation of uh, Fort Del Pilar Annex from Baguio City National High School, Maine, for better uh, quality of education. Uh, for, um, for Hillside, Hillside was established in 2010 uh, as an annex also of Baguio City National High School, but uh, with uh, its few years of existence, the enrollment already uh, increased and uh, there are also permanent teachers uh, assigned already in uh, Hillside Annex, which may still be with Hillside and, uh, National High School once it is separated, since uh, Baguio City National High School um, has enough uh, teachers by then. So, uh, with buildings, it has also uh, existing buildings. But of course, uh, funds will be uh, needed when the enrollment will also increase. So uh, once again, Deb Edgar interposes no objection for the separation of Hillside uh, Annex and uh, be named Hillside National High School Annex for better quality of education. Uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, Mr. Chair, just just an added information, Mr. Chair, on uh, Fort Del Pilar uh, National High School. 
before uh, uh, the, the last month, we went to uh, PMA and talked with the superintendent of PMA together with the other officials of DepEd. Uh, and we were given uh, an area, uh, about two hectares, for the uh, Port del Pilar National High School. Right now, uh, we, the school is actually within the property of uh, PMA, and uh, the students are entering PMA through the main gate, and this affected, uh, to a certain degree, uh, the accessibility of the school to other students coming from outside PMA. Uh, with this, uh, the PMA management, together with the Secretary of National Defense, had uh, given the go signal to give two hectares of land for the Fort Del Pilar National High School. And uh, this is one item that we would like to uh, include in our budget uh, next year for uh, the construction of uh, uh, the different infrastructure uh, for this National High School, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kong Mark. We now call on uh, Yusek Komali to certify uh, the completeness of those uh, two measures. <clears throat> uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we can certify the uh, satisfaction of the uh, requirements provided under DO number 40, series of 2013. And I would like to add other parts 6, A2, and B2, uh, Mr. Chair, where all the documentary requirements are enumerated for House Bill number 7992 and 7994. May I also share, with the permission of the Chair, Mr. Chair, that natutuwa po kami uh, sa totoo po lamang, Mr. Chair, mga panukalang batas na naglalayong ihiwalay at gumawa ng uh, independent school mula po sa mga kasalukuyang annexes po natin, school annexes, basta masatisfy lamang po nga yung mga requirements na amin pong itinakda dun sa ating uh, DepEd order na nabanggit dahil po ang polisiya po ng DepEd, Mr. Chair, in fact, is not to add any more school annexes, Mr. Chair. We only create new schools if we find it uh, necessary. And for all the school annexes existing nationwide, basta nga po masatisfy lamang yung requirements Ang talagang uh, pangarap po natin, Mr. Chair, ay ang mga school annexes na ito ay maging independent schools. And for that, we commend our uh, Congo and all the authors of all these various bills seeking to uh, separate uh, school annexes to establish as an uh, independent school. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yusef. Thank you very much for that manifestation. We now, uh, we will now consider... Mr. Yeah, Chairman, yeah. Uh, Senator, that's it. Uh, hindi, tanong lang kay Yusek because I think yung ibang subject for approval today would involve yung construction of new buildings. Yung um, DepEd Central ba may ginagawa ng new design to make our schools uh, ano ba, COVID compliant or uh, may, may ganung ano ba? <laughs> well, di ba, magiging bahagi na to dun sa paghahanda natin sa new normal. And I think nabanggit din ni Congressman Mark kanina na yung nai-envision nila na magiging school building would um, in, para magiging compliant na uh, against COVID. So, uh, may policy direction ba from DepEd Central to design uh, buildings? Apo. Such as may may, may pag-uusap na pong uh, nangyayari, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as Senator Nancy, uh, mayroon po. Uh, pero kung mayroon na pong uh, uh, eksaktong struktura na ay kailangan ko pong uh, event ito. Pero ang uh, masisiguro ko po sa inyo, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, yung ating pong bagong struktura naman ay uh, compliant with respect to the uh, present uh, challenges that we face in terms of building structures that can withstand uh, typhoon with the speed of uh, equivalent to signal number four and number five. Na bago na po natin yan at pati po yung uh, typhoon intensity or magnitude. Pero yung sa COVID, Mr. Chair, i-revet ko po at ibigay po ako ng feedback kaagad sa inyo, Mr. Chair, Senator Nancy, kung natapos na po yun. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to, uh, Senator Nancy, uh, before we move on to the other bill, let's call on uh, Congressman Mangawang again. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I, I was uh, called by uh, Congressman Mangawang. He can see us, he can hear us, but he cannot go through uh, the line. So he asked me to sponsor his uh, bill. And if I may be allowed, I will uh, present uh, House Bill 7992, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Kong, uh, Mark, uh, with your kind indulgence and understanding, uh, if that is the case, we'll finish first with the congressmen who are present here. Uh, because I can see a lot of congressmen who are present here. And then we'll go back again uh, to uh, House Bill 7992. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we now call on... Uh, we will now consider House Bill 8239 and act separating the Santo Rosario Elementary School, Santos Encarnacion Elementary School Extension in Barangay Dalandanan, Valenzuela City, Metro Manila, from the Santo Rosario Elementary School, converting it into an independent elementary school to be known as Santos Encarnacion Elementary School and appropriating funds, therefore. And at the same time, we will also consider House Bill number 8240, an act separating the Malinta Elementary School, Pinalagad Annex into Sitio, Pinalagad, in Sitio Pinalagad, Barangay Malinta, Valenzuela City, Metro Manila, from the Malinta Elementary School, converting it into an independent elementary school to be known as Pinalagad Elementary School and appropriating funds, therefore. So we call on uh, Congressman Wesley Gachalian. Mas wapo huto sa akin ng ilang paligo. <laughs> uh, maraming salamat Mr. Chair and good morning Senator Aimee, Senator Nancy and to the rest of my colleague likewise to I can see Mr. Militon uh, Zorbano our Deputy Superintendent good morning sir uh, Mr. Chair I would like to register my uh, explanatory note to be my sponsorship speech uh, basically House Bill 2314 is just a uh, separate thing Rosario and likewise House Bill 6142 uh, seeks to separate Can you repeat from the beginning because you uh, disappeared? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, uh, the, this bill uh, just seeks to uh, separate Santos Encarnacion to Santo Rosario Elementary School. That's House Bill 2314. And likewise, for House Bill 6142, this seeks to separate uh, Pinalagad Annex to the mother school, which is Malinta Elementary School. And I would like to move that my explanatory note be registered as my sponsorship speech, Mr. Chair. And likewise, seeking for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And then now we call on uh, the regional director, Malcolm, Mr. Dr. Malcolm Garma. Mr. Chair, if I be recognized, I represent R.D. Malcolm Garma. I'm Jennifer Bibas, Chief of the Quality Assurance Division. Good morning to the honorable members of the Committee of Basic Arts culture uh, with regards to uh, two schools in Suera, uh, the Pinalaga and the San Incarnation Elementary School, the NCR interposes no objection to the conversion of these two schools. Uh, with regards to the documentary requirements in our DEP and series of 2014, both of the schools have complied with all these requirements. Oh, I have Mm 
Uh, we call on uh, Yusek Omani. We confirm, um, uh, Mr. Chair, House Bill numbers 8239 and 8240, satisfying uh, the requirements provided under the old number 40, series of 2014. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we now go back to uh, House Bill 7994. Um, Seven, I know Wang has been trying to uh, connect on and off. Share. He was here. He can chat with our staff. He actually reached out to our comsec, but uh, he's uh, on and off. So maybe may any, any I think Congressman Mark Go um, took over as his uh, sponsoring as the sponsoring legislator. Go Mark. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I I would like to sponsor the uh, House uh, the bill of Congressman Mangawang. Uh, this is uh, House Bill 7992, an act separating the Nanning National High School, uh, Mosimos Extension in Barangay Dupag, City of Tabuk, Province of Kalinga from Nanning National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Dupag National High School and appropriating funds therefore. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the explanatory note of House Bill 7992 7, be considered as the sponsorship message of uh, Congressman uh, Allen uh, Mangawang, uh, Mr. Chair. I so move. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kong Mark. And uh, again, we call on uh, Regional Director Carino for um, his manifestation. Morning again, uh, Mr. Chair. As for uh, House Bill 7992, which is uh, the separation of Nanang, Nanang National High School, Musimos Annex, which will be known as Dupag National High School. Again, the school uh, was established as an annex in June 2011, and uh, it has been under the supervision of the main school. And uh, this uh, separation of this annex is sought again for the sake of the uh, 156 learners as of now uh, for better quality education. Uh, based from the documents uh, that I have, uh, they have satisfactorily completed all the documents required under DepEd 40. So once again, DepEd CAR does not uh, uh, or supports the separation of uh, Nanang Annex to be known as Dupag National High School. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh uh, Ma'am, uh, we call on you, Sekomali, for the certification on completeness. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, confirming what our RD Estelle Carino just manifested, HB 7992, satisfying our requirements under DO40. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. With that, um, may we now hear uh, a motion? Uh, to approve all the bills yes. uh, on the separating of uh, various schools. I herewith move that uh, in an omnibus motion, all these bills separating and creating new schools, independent schools from the annexes so mentioned, are hereby approved. And Thank you. Uh, any second? Hello, second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with that uh, motion, duly seconded by Senator Binay, we now uh, approve uh, all the bills that were uh, considered earlier, and this will be referred to plenary for uh, its uh, final approval. So thank you very much uh, for your time, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Raimi, Senator Binay, maraming salamat. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Yes? Uh, can we also handle House Bill 7996 as stipulated in the memo? Uh, Lunda National High School. This is from the Ed Region 9. Ah, yes, ma'am. I understand that uh, Congressman Amatong has yet to join us today. Ah, okay. So uh, I, I, I thought... Uh, Wait for his presence. Okay, thank, thank you, po. Um, Mr. So, Chair. Who will sponsor the bill? Uh, may I be recognized, Mr. Chair? Yes. yes. Uh, I was, uh, with prior uh, permission from the committee, I was uh, authorized po by uh, Congressman Amatong to sponsor the bill for his behalf. Currently, he cannot uh, attend the meeting because he's in Sambuanga del Norte where the internet connection is uh, unstable and intermittent. Can you identify yourself? Uh, I am Victor Carlo Irene, the legislative staff of Congressman Isagani Amatong. Uh, I conferred with the committee uh, beforehand uh, in order to be able to speak for Congressman Amatong, Mr. Chair. Do you require a legislator to sponsor the bill? No? Obviously, this is a bill, and we would like to... Uh, uh, we would like a legislator to sponsor the bill. You know? um, we prefer the original sponsor to sponsor the bill you know? so that uh, it will be put on record. But um, uh, Mr. Chair, we would like their congressman to, uh, uh, to uh, substitute um, if any congressman would like, would like to uh, substitute for Kong Amatong. Mr. Chair, if I may be allowed, I will uh, sponsor the bill of uh, Congressman Isagani Amatong. Yes, go ahead, um, Congressman Mark. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to sponsor the bill of uh, Congressman Isagani Amatong. I so move that uh, the sponsor explanatory note of House Bill 7996, an act separating the Cebuco National High School Lunday Annex in Barangay Lunday Municipality of Cebuco Province of Sambuanga del Norte from the Cebuco National High School, converting it into an independent National High School to be known as Lunday National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. I so move, uh, Mr. Chair, that this uh, explanatory note be adopted as the sponsorship message of uh, Congressman Isagani Amatong. I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Mark. We are now in consideration of uh, House Bill 7996. Uh, we Recognize the regional director, Dr. Isabel, Isabelita Bores. Thank you and buenos dias, Mr. Chair, and all the your honors, including, of course, uh, Under Secretary Omali. This regional office is supportive of House Bill uh, 7996. The fact that Lundai Annex has been in existence for 25 years and it has gotten an enrollment of uh, that will complete a junior high school of 228 with the complete set of teachers manning it. So this office is strongly recommending and is supportive of the passage of House Bill 7996. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Boris, maybe uh, Mali for the completeness. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Confirming again what our RD uh, Beth Boris just uh, manifested as to the compliance of the said house measure to our debt and for uh, order number forty, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. You just for an orderly discussion, we'll uh, uh, will require we will we'll request one of our senators to move for its approval. Senator Marcos. Yes, with that, uh, we move for the approval of uh, the aforesaid bill, and it's um, um, it's uh, 
taking up in plenary at the earliest possible opportunity. Thank you. I second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senators. Uh, we now approve House Bill 7996, and uh, this bill will be uh, further approved and deliberated in the plenary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we now go on the conversion. Uh, we now move, we now consider House Bill 8132, an act converting the Sisogon Elementary School in Barangay Sisogon Municipality of Matnog, Province of Sorsogon, into an integrated school to be known as Sisogon Integrated School and appropriating funds, therefore. Um, we will defer first the consideration of uh, House Bill 8132. Uh, we just need to clarify some uh, um, some matters. Uh, as to House Bill 7997 and House Bill 8237, both authored by uh, Congressman uh, Amatong, uh, is there any representative who wants to um sponsor the bill is Kong Mark still around yeah. When we reach out to Kong Mark, no, um, on this matter, but we'll defer this for now. Um, and then may I request uh, the office of uh, Kong Amatong to reach out to Kong Mark so that we can consider your bill. So we go to the establishments of school. Uh, we now will consider House Bill 4955, an act establishing a national junior high school in Barangay Punta by Bay City, the province of Leyte, to be known as Punta Junior High School and appropriating funds, therefore. And we have a uh, twin bill in the Senate. Uh, that's Senate Bill number 1567, an act establishing, uh, 1576, sorry. Establishing a national junior high school in Barangay Punta by Bay City, province of Leyte, to be known as Punta Junior National School and appropriating funds, therefore, authored by um, Senator Marcos. Yes. By Senator Marcos. So we call on uh, uh, Congressman uh, Car Carl Cari. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, 
Good morning, Your Honors. I am Carl Nicolas Cari of the 5th District of Leyte, the author of House Bill 4955. Punta National High School's establishment seeks to address the lack of national high school in neighboring barangays. Children travel 6 to 8 kilometers per school day to bye-bye national high school for the most prolonged period to pursue secondary edition. The travel has led to incurred travel and food expenses and to expose them to safety and health risks that may be remedied by the establishment of the national high, high school closer to them, thus allowing them to free themselves from illiteracy and to improve their social and economic status without compromising their safety and well-being, your honors. Thank you. Senator Amy, any sponsoring uh, speech? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to support uh, Representative Kari Matadana Tayo, Chairman. Yung tanay niya, ang, uh, yung tanay at yung lolo, yung tatay at yung lolo na niya ang ating classmate. Um, because of the uh, burgeoning growth of Cebu, the outlying areas such as Bai Bai have seen an uptake in population growth that now require more schools. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Ivy, we now call on Director Gemma Ledesma. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, kasi yung nakasulat po sa House Bill 4955, uh, National Junior High School. I would like to motion to change the bill's title, Mr. Chair, and act establishing a national high school, not junior high school, in Barangay Punta, Bay Bay City, Province of Leyte. Okay. Okay. We'll take note of that and uh, amend accordingly. We'll take note of that and amend accordingly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, we call on uh, Ms. Gemma Ledesma. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Rita Ardimakiling, the Chief of the Quality Assurance Division of DepEd Region 8, representing the Regional Director, Maria uh, Gemma Mercado Ledesma. So, good morning, Mr. Chair. First, I'd like to acknowledge the proponent of the House Bill number no. 4955 and House Bill number no. 1576, respectively, an act establishing a national, uh, national high school or Punta National High School in Barangay Punta by Bay City, Province of Leyte to be known as Punta National High School. The regional office region <clears throat> is strongly support on the establishment of the said school, Punta National High School. We would like to inform Mr. Chair that the application, the, the application documents were already submitted to the regional office and evaluated. Uh, however, we noted that there is still lacking document, the proof of ownership of the school site, which is the basic requirement for the approval of the regional director. And again, we are, the Deputy Regional Office is strongly support the establishment of Punta National High School and has no objection for the establishment of that school provided that they can comply the the, the only one requirement needed by the regional office for the approval of the regional director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Once again, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We call on Yusek Komali for House Bill uh, 4955. Confirming again, Mr. Chair, compliance or satisfaction of House Bill 4995 with our Deped Order Number 40. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. We, we are now uh, in consideration of House Bill 5328, uh, an act establishing National High School in Barangay 
Talogoy Municipality of Malita, Province of Davao Occidental, to be known as Tamaing Tribal National School, National High School, and appropriating funds, therefore. We recognize once again <coughs> Representative Lorna Bautista Bandigan. <coughs> Hello, good morning again, Mr. Chair. Hey, ma'am. Okay, good morning. Sir, uh, I, uh, I would like to manifest again that my explanatory note will be my sponsorship speech. And again, thank you very much, very, very much. Um, we will insert your sponsorship speech into the records. <coughs> we like to yes. recognize Dr. Alan Farnazo, our regional director for Region 11. <coughs> Good morning everyone. Magandang umaga ulit sa ating pinakamamahal na chair ng committee at saka ng ating uh, uh, Senator uh, Wen Gatsalian at saka ng ating uh, sponsor from uh, the Lone District of Daba Occidental Congresswoman uh, Lorna Bautista Bandigan. It is an honor on the part of the Department of Education, that our officials, especially in that part of the region, have identified areas, especially one that caters to the needs for education of our Lumads. And this establishment of a school in this uh, far-flung area of the municipality is an added uh, feature of making education and access really reach the least and the last in terms of the last mile uh, schools priorities of our government. It is in this context that we join our voice to the effort of Congresswoman Lorna Bandigan in reaching the farthest and uh, our, the, the, the least and the uh, schools in the category of the last mile schools. I'm sure education is not only something about literacy and numeracy. It is about improving lives. It is making informed choices and making them productive members of the community. We cannot do so less without uh, making our uh, efforts join the greater interests of making our learners learn. Hence, it is my distinct honor to join the effort of our distinguished sponsor for the establishment of the school in the farthest uh, part of the municipality in the province of Davao Occidental. And uh, I'm so honored to be sharing my statement of support for and behalf of the Department of Education, Regional Office Number 11, together with our men and women in the division of uh, Dabo Occidental, led by our Schools Division Superintendent, Lorenzo Mendoza. Maraming maraming salamat po, distinguished sponsor and honorable members of the committee and our chair. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Allen, and thank you very much for that very inspiring speech. Uh, it's refreshing and uh, also truly inspiring to see uh, DepEd and our legislators work together for the betterment of our students. Um, uh, we really need uh, the whole of community approach from our uh, legislators as well as our uh, uh, team you know, to uh, reach out to our students, especially in time of COVID. So thank you very much for that uh, very inspiring speech. Uh, with that, uh, we call on you, Sekumali. Confirm everything, Mr. Chair, compliance with our DepEd order. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sek. Um, we now move on um, House Bill 8 to Mr. Chen, Mr. Chen. Yes? Uh, sorry, uh, it was cut earlier during my bill. Can I get an update regarding on it? Yes, we will have an omnibus approval later on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we will now uh, 
consider House Bill uh, 8238, an act establishing a national high school in Barangay Marcos, municipality of Santa, province of Ilocos Sur, Santa National High School and appropriating funds therefore. At the same time, we will also consider House uh, Senate Bill Number 1392, an act establishing a national high school in Barangay Marcos. Municipality of Santa, province of Ilocosur, to be known as Santa National High School and appropriating funds, therefore, sponsored by Senator Marcos. Dapat talaga is sponsored to. Dahil barangay Marcos to eh. <laughs> Ako may ari niya. Kapagalitan ka, Ivy. So, um, with that, uh, Senator Marcos, any sponsorship speech before we call on Senate, uh, Congressman, oh, Congresswoman uh, Christine? Yes, I'd like uh, to extend support to uh, Barangay Marcos in uh, the historic town of Santa with the uh, um, universally uh, acknowledged heritage church. Um, it is a uh, distant and underserved barangay, as we know, and certainly a national high school is in order. Thank you. Uh, with that, we call on uh, Congresswoman Christine Singson Mihan. Yes. Uh, good morning to the chair, uh, Senator Wynn, Senator Aimi, Senator Nancy, and our mayor of Santa Ilocos who is here with us today, uh, Mayor Jesus Bueno. Thank you for considering House Bill 8238 and Senator Aimee's Senate Bill 1392, a bill establishing the Santa National High School. The local government of Santa Ilocos through their leadership, its mayors, and local Sangbunyan, has through a resolution deemed it necessary to request the establishment of a public national high school at Barangay Marcos, which shall cater to students from nine barangays. The establishment of the Santa National High School would greatly benefit the children in the municipality. To add a nationally funded high school would greatly boost primary education in the municipality and would assure our children and students that their access to quality education is still a priority of the government, even at this time of pandemic. I hope that with the help of the Senate Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture, chaired by Senator Wynn, Senator Aimee Marcos, and the members of their Honorable Committee, the people of Santa would soon have their national high school at the very heart of their municipality. Thank you again, and thank you for being supportive of us and the Honorable Members of the Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we now call on Regional Director Tolentino Aquino. <laughs> Sir Tolentino? Yes, Mr. Chair. Good morning, yes. Mr. Chair. I am Rhea Joy Carbonell, the Legal Officer of DepEd Region 1, representing Regional Director Tolentino Aquino. On behalf of DepEd Region 1, we would like to thank our representatives and Senator Amy Marcos for sponsoring the bill for the establishment of Santa National High School. After the conduct of the evaluation of documents and on-site validation of the division and regional inspectorate team, DepEd Region 1 strongly supports the establishment of Santa National High School at Barangay Marcos Santa Ilocosur. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we call on uh, Yusek Komali for the completeness. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, House Bill Number 8238, Senate Bill 1392, seeking to establish Santa National School in the local sewer province. Mr. Chair, found to be uh, uh, compliant with our DO number four. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, with that, uh, we have one more bill, but uh, uh, I understand that uh, Congressman Belmonte is yet to join us. This is House Bill number uh, 7993, you know, and I understand he has uh, yet to join us for today. So, okay. 
So with that, we will defer until he joins us. We still have two more bills to uh, to uh, tackle uh, before we terminate this uh, uh, hearing. So we're reaching out to um, Congressman Belmonte as well as Congressman Amatong uh, for their sponsoring uh, uh, to, to sponsor the bill. So with that, we'd like... Yeah, yes? Yeah, sorry. Um, Mr. Chair, if you'd allow, um, is this the establishment of the senior high school in Talipapa QC? Yes, yes. Uh, given that I have a counterpart uh, Senate bill, 1660, perhaps we can dispose of the matter by my sponsoring on behalf of uh, um, Congressman Del Monte, the um, establishment of a senior high school in uh, said Barangay Talipapa. Their overcrowded situation is well known, and it is high time that uh, high school should be located in every barangay. This seems to be one of the last barangays in the 5th District that until today is deprived of its very own senior high school pop. Uh, with that, uh, we will uh, consider the sponsorship uh, of uh, Senator Amy Marcos as the sponsorship uh, speech for this uh, said measure. So we're now in consideration of House Bill number 7993 and Senate Bill, okay, and Senate Bill number uh, 1660. And let me just read the title of the measure. An act establishing a senior high school in Barangay, Talipapa, Quezon City, Metro Manila to be known as Telipapa National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. So with that sponsorship speech, uh, we'll, we'll uh, record that into the records. We now call on Dr. Malcolm Garma, uh, the regional director, to uh, manifest uh, their uh, comments. Mr. Chair, on behalf of Director Garma, I'm Jennifer Vibas, again, Chief of the Quality Assurance Division. We would like to thank Senator Aini Marcos for sponsoring uh, the bill for Talipapa National High School to be established. And on behalf of the Regional Office, DEP and NCR, we likewise interpret no objection to the establishment of Talipapa National High School. In August 2017, DEPED-NCR issued Regional Order um, Number 12, Series of 2019, for its successful compliance of all the documentary requirements is in our DEPED Order Number 51, Series of 2015. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, you said, uh, Omani? Yes. Opo, Mr. Chair, confirming what our Deped NCR representative just manifested, House Bill Number 5328 and Senate Bill, uh, or I'm sorry, House Bill uh, 7993, Mr. Chair, and Senate Bill Number 1660, satisfying our Deped Order Number 40, Series of 2014. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. So with that, we have uh, completed all the bills on uh, establishing uh, schools. So we'd like to hear a motion to approve. May I move, Mr. Chair, that uh, um, the um, requirements of the DEPED having been accomplished and the urgency and uh, desire of the communities to establish these uh, schools having been uh, uh, clarified, that uh, we approve the uh, measures discussed and uh, send them to plenary for immediate discussion and debate. Thank you. Thank you. Any second, Senator Nancy? I second, Mr. Chairman. With that, uh, we approve all the uh, measures on establishing uh, new schools in different parts of the country and we'll submit this to plenary for, uh, for its final approval. With that, we can go back to the conversion of schools. And uh, we are now in consideration of uh, House Bill 8132. This is an act converting 
the Sisogon Elementary School in Barangay, Sisogon Municipality of Matnog, province of Sorsogon, into an integrated school to be known as Sisogon Integrated School, providing funds, therefore. And I understand that uh, Congressman Kari will uh, sponsor the measure. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair. In behalf of Kong Amatong and Kong Ditas, Ditas Ramos, I would like to sponsor the bill 8132 Sisigon Integrated High School and 8237 Osho National Science High School Zambonga del Norte. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Kong uh, Barn, uh, let's tackle first uh, House Bill 8132. This is by uh, Congresswoman Ditas. Uh, unfortunately, he's not here with us anymore. Uh, Kong Ditas is a party mate of mine in uh, NPC, and uh, she's uh, one of my uh, one of the congressmen that I respect in our party, and uh, unfortunately, is no longer with us. But uh, this is a legacy, legacy that uh, she wants to uh, leave behind, especially in her home province of Sorbonne. So uh, thank you very much, Kong Carl, for sponsoring the said matter so uh, we can at least uh, uh, fulfill the legacy and the dream of our Congresswoman, Ita Ramos. Uh, with that, I call on Regional Director Gilbert Salsat. Uh, your Honor, good morning. Uh, Sisigon Elementary School has started its operation in 1951 and it has complete curricular offering from kinder to grade 10. Approval of Sisigon Integrated School will not only benefit Barangay Sisigon but other adjacent barangays in Matnog District, Sorsogon Province. Uh, Mr. Chairman, your honor, with me is the superintendent of Sorsogon Province, Jose Doncilio, and our chief for planning, Roy Banyas. As per record of this office, Sisigon Integrated School has substantial compliance with, to the requirements for the conversion of schools. In fact, it was granted government permit by this office. We therefore support and recommend for the approval of House Bill 8132. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sad Sad. Uh, we now call on uh, Yusek Omali. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Confirming what our R.D. Gilbert just manifested, compliance of House Bill number 8132, Chisigon Integrated School in the province of Sorsogon as complying with our debt and order requirements on conversion of schools. Uh, Mr. Chair, we would like to uh, manifest, uh, maybe for the record, yung pagbubuo po ng uh, integrated school ay isa rin pong uh, uh, pangarap ng DepEd. Pag sinabi po kasing integrated school, ay binibigyan po natin ng uh, kakayanan ang paaralan na mag-offer ng buo pong uh, basic education. At uh, yun po ang uh, nais natin. Uh, elementarya, high school, sa isang lugar po lamang kung uh, masasatisfy po ang uh, ating uh, requirements that's the direction that we want to take. So we we commend uh, the authors of this uh, measure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. Um, with that, uh, we will have, uh, we will now tackle two bills uh, sponsored by Kong Amatong. And this is House Bill 7, se uh, sorry, House Bill 7997 an act converting the Labason Central School in Barangay Lopok Municipality of Labason, province of Zamboanga del Norte, into an integrated school to be known as Labason Integrated School, appropriating funds therefore. 
and House Bill 8237 attack converting the Siokon National High School in Barangay Poblacion, Municipality of Siokon, Province of Zamboanga, the Norte, into a National Science High School to be known as Siokon National Science High School and appropriating funds therefore. I understand that uh, once again, Congressman Carl Cari will be the sponsor of the measure. Congressman? Thank you, Mr. Chair. In behalf of Congressman Namatong, I would like to sponsor House Bill 8237. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, also, 7997? 7997, Labasan Integrated High School. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, we call on uh, Regional Director Dr. Isabella Isabelita Bores once again. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and may I also thank Congressman Mark and now Congressman Kari for sponsoring the bill of my good Congressman Amatong. And may I also manifest the support of Dep Ed Richo 9 uh, in the entire congressional district of Congressman Amatong. This is the only, the only high school which will give focus on science. We call now Shoko National Science High School for the whole of Sambuanga del Norte Congressional, Third Congressional District. In terms of its facilities, in terms of the teacher component, especially the preparation of, for our would-be science specialist teachers, and in terms of the enrollment, this will already qualify and this will truly serve the purpose for putting an specialization on science in that uh, area of Sambuanga del Norte, the farthest, and I think, I just used the word, the most critical area in, in the Lorty of Sambuanga. And cons on a parallel note, Mr. Chair, uh, we are also supportive of the Bason uh, Integrated School, as this was also an offshoot of the good effort of Congressman Amato putting emphasis also on a tech book uh, education, which we earlier, I think last year, also have successfully proposed and uh, approved so that uh, in summary the Pedro 29 is supportive of the two uh, house bills sponsored by congressman amatong and of course with congressman Harry. thank you to um, um Boris, uh, we call on you for the two measures mr chair uh, confirming again compliance of House Bill numbers 8237 and 7997 with the uh, order number 40, uh, requirements on conversion of schools. Lalo na po, Mr. Chair, if I may manifest yung conversion po ng uh, Shokon National High School to Shokon National Science High School ay talagang dapat pong uh, uh, suportahan dahil po yung uh, mandato ng ating saligang batas sa ilalim po ng Article 2, Section 17, not only giving emphasis and focus on education but also on science and technology. Nakalagay po doon, bigyan ng prioridad at ang kagandahan po nito, Mr. Chair, hindi lamang po ito simpleng pagdidigay ng special science curriculum program dahil ito po ngayon ay gagawing National Science High School, mas mataas na level na programa po, tulad po ng nasabi ng ating uh, RD Beth, ang i-offer na po ngayon ng ating Socon National Science High School. Ganun din po, Mr. Chair, sa Labason Integrated School, ang dati pong nag-offer lamang ng mababang paaralan, napakaganda po, ngayon, Integrated School na ay mag-offer na rin po ng mataas na paaralan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusa Kumali, uh, for that manifestation. Uh, with that, uh, we'd like to request uh, Senator Aimee for a motion. Yes, uh, we'd like uh, to move at this juncture for the passage of the above bills, clearly having complied with the requirements established by the DEP-ED and deserving them for to be uh, forwarded to the plenary for immediate this debate and discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Binay. With that, uh, we are now uh, approving the bills on conversion of schools, and we will be endorsing the three bills for uh, further deliberation and uh, approval by the plenary. Thank you very much, Paul, and congratulations. So with that, we will now move on the heritage. Yes, gracias. You. Uh, with the kind indulgence of Kong Rufus, we'll start off first with um, Ilocosur, uh, Kong. Uh, this is House Bill 7927, an act establishing a heritage zone within the municipality of San Vicente, province of Ilocosur. And we call on uh, Congressman, Deputy Speaker uh, D.V. Saviliano for his sponsorship. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Honorable, uh, I'm Marcos, the Honorable uh, uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm very happy that the uh, bill of my district will be discussed here in the Senate. And uh, please, uh, my request that my exploratory note be just uh, uh, adapted para mas mabilis po. Thank you. Thank you, Kong. Uh, Kong, um, maybe, uh, maybe request you to uh, give us an overview of your uh, tour and, 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 and how this proposed measure can help the town of San Vicente and how it can uh, help you know, the province of uh, uh, Ilocosur as a whole. So may I request a, a brief overview of um, this bill and also the uh, said town, no? because the said town is supposed to be uh, the uh, center of this uh, heritage bill. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, when I was a governor, uh, uh, we declared the uh, our province as a heritage province of Ilocosur. So, pinaninindigan ko yan sa programa ko. So, uh, and uh, it's not only being a heritage, but we have to preserve, conserve anything about the, our culture. Yun ang programa namin sa Ilocos. Uh, sinusundan ko yung kay, ano, kay Senator Aini. So anyway, Mr. Chair, uh, San Vicente is, uh, is in the boundary of uh, Vigan. It's a part of Metro Vigan. And in San Vicente, it's a small town, but they have uh, uh, so many um, uh, infrastructure, old houses. They have... Uh, traditional crafts, they have uh, craftsmen, artists, and uh, they have also a, a pilgrimage church, yung San Vicente, and uh, even the people of Abra and uh, in my neighboring provinces, they go there every uh, Tuesday to uh, to visit the, uh, the uh, uh, Apo San Vicente, because they think na si Apo San Vicente is a powerful saint, kasi siya lang yung may, may wings eh. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chair, uh, what's happening now is uh, 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 there's so many uh, uh, infrastructure going on. Maraming nasisira mga buildings. Even the the the, the homeowners, hindi nila masyado nila appreciate yung mga old houses nila. So, we have a program for the conservation and preservation of all the landmarks, uh, uh, old houses, crafts, etc. So, yun lang, Mr. Chair, and uh, I think, uh, and vegan, medyo marami na rin nagpupunta dyan, sikat na sikat na. So, we have to link uh, San Vicente na I think uh, magandang gawin because uh, hindi pa siya masyadong nagagalaw. Yes. Mr. Chair, if I may add. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chair, may I add, uh, in support of Congressman Savellano and our uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, indeed, uh, San Vicente is deserving of the uh, um, uh, title Heritage Town. And uh, despite its rich 
um, colonial architecture. The reality is being a mere fifth class municipality, it's unable to engender the funds or to raise the donations. <clears throat> so perhaps it's uh, naming as a heritage town will assist in the effort to develop it as an extension of vegan city, which is now extremely crowded as a tourist spot uh, nationwide and worldwide. So konting tulong siguro dun lang sa pangalan man lang, eh baka yung San Vicente eh, mabigyan ng konting halaga at uh, karampatan pondo. Thank you. Thank you, San Aimee. Well, we also have um, some resource persons to uh, us, um, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Center. Yeah, just for clarification, um, based on the title of the bill, it's not really naming San Vicente as a heritage town. Tama po ba? It's creating a heritage zone within the town. Tama po ba, um, Congressman DV? Kong DB, nakamute po kayo. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, the uh, National Museum and National Archives, they have already, uh, have done already a cultural mapping on the place. And uh, they, they're really pushing for, for, for it as a heritage. So in fact, the National Museum, uh, declared it also as a natural cultural property uh, uh, zone. Na. So uh, we just need your support. And uh, also, uh, we have also uh, met with uh, other agencies of government like the SUCs, the University of Northern Philippines, DPWH, the Nueva Segovia, <clears throat> and uh, DepEd uh, to, uh, to formulate uh, the uh, conservation uh, plans of the uh, the uh, place already. Uh, uh, Congressman DV, ang ang recommendation huba is to declare the whole town of San Vicente or just a portion of uh, the town. Well, uh, for the for the for the structures, it's in the population lang. But you know, uh, it's just just declaring a, 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 a just the uh, town, just the, the structures. If you don't uh, help also the traditional crafts, the, the craftsman, kasi yun po ang kabuhayan nila eh. So, dapat magsama po yan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Congressman DV. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we also, we are also here, uh, the mayor of uh, San Vicente is also here with us. Mayor uh, Tabanda, Jose Tabanda. Uh, we recognize Mayor Tamanda for any comments. Mayor Tamanda, Mayor Jose Tamanda. This is not here. We recognize uh, the presence also of uh, Mr. Jeremy Barnes of the uh, National. Museum of the Philippines. <clears throat> yes, good morning, Chair. Um, on behalf of Director General Barnes, who's currently in summer, I'm standing in for him. And um, his instruction was, and I fully support this, uh, is to um, endorse without reservation for the consideration of the committee um, the support for this a bill. We have been through exhaustive meetings before the House that day, last year, and all our suggestions have been integrated beautifully into the version, the House version. So, um, therefore, we endorse, respectfully endorse um, for the committee's consideration the approval of this House bill. Thank you. Can you, um, ma'am, can, can you respond to the question of Senator D9? Oh, okay. Yes, there. Um, oh no, because are we carrying the entire town as a heritage zone or just parts of the town? Well, as um, Congressman Sevillano um, underscored earlier, 
there are properties there that have already been declared. So, um, uh, and so far as those uh, properties are concerned, no, um, it is our position that uh, they should be, you know, uh, as uh, to the extent na meron kaming na declare, then they should be part of the zone. Um, I, I cannot uh, speci specifically state uh, yung breadth no, or area, but within the uh, within the, uh, as embraced ng ng uh, house version house version na to, then uh, and uh, to the extent na meron kaming na declare, then we we propose na uh, ma integrate po siya sa his uh, heritage zone na yon. Mr. Chair and uh, and uh, Senator Nancy, ito pong San Vicente, eh, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, eh, napakaliit lang na bayan. Um, aanim lang yung barangay dyan at saka hindi barangay ng Quezon City po yan. Talagang maliliit na barangay lamang yan. And uh, as I uh, mentioned, it's a mere fifth class uh, municipality that uh, would need our support as part of the Vegan Heritage Zone for its proper development and even uh, conservation po. Mr. Chair, in addition to that. Yeah, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chair, kasi yung San Vicente, in, in their barangays, meron sila yung mga bat, yung mga in, uh, sa indigo nun. So, kailangan ma-preserve din natin nun kasi it's part of the culture. And uh, in San Vicente, that's where yung, ano, yung uh, Pasi Revolt also uh, passed from uh, Dingras doon sa bayan uh, doon sa sa probinsya po ni ano ni uh, Senator Amy. So kailangan do nating maayos 'yon and it, it passes in some barangays of San Vicente and also in San Vicente it's known as the furniture center of uh, the north kasi doon no talaga almost all the households may gumagawa sila ng ano furniture making. Kaya gusto kong ini-include yung uh, yung crafts because yun ang kabuhayan ng tao eh. If you're going only declared yung mga churches, all the structures, parang hindi tulang po. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Senator Bine. Ah, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I fully support uh, this <clears throat> house bill, but um, siguro I don't know if there's a need to amend the bill and change it na instead of a heri heri heritage zone, why don't we declare the whole town of San Vicente as a heritage town? Congressman uh, D.B., is that uh, something that can be uh, considered? Sa akin lang po, okay lang po sa akin. Uh, Di ba, Kong Bibi, parang it will, it will cover the whole town kasi katulad nga nung pagka uh, sabi ni Sen Aimee kanina it, this is a uh, small town a fifth class eh siguro pag biniklare na natin yung buong bayan baka mas malaking uh, assistance yung pwedeng ibigay Mas maganda po yun <laughs> Maraming salamat po Okay We also uh would like to call on NCCA, the Executive uh, Director, Al Ryan uh, Alejandre. NCCA? Mayor. NCCA? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. good, good morning, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Charles Salazar of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts on, in behalf of our Executive Director, Mr. Al Ryan Alejandre. I believe uh, Senator Binay was uh, making a suggestion that, uh, to include the whole town, but, but the nature of the bill will also uh, be different from what was originally uh, intended because the declaration would be from heritage zone to a heritage town. Um, the uh, as its current fo in its current form, we actually uh, support it because the the bill is structured and is aligned already with the provisions of Republic Act one hundred sixty six. 
the scope of the zone would be subject to the identification of the municipal government through an enactment of an ordinance. So uh, there's still uh, some much leeway for the local government unit to determine the meets and bounds of the zone. And I think it's also in consideration of the uh, deeds of the stakeholders in the municipality because there might be some limitations which the zone might have to impose in order to preserve the structures uh, that were initially that were earlier mentioned by Congressman Savellano, which were in fact last year declared by the, by the National Museum as uh, some were important cultural properties, the others were national cultural treasures. Um, to the NCCA uh, uh, representative, uh, I, I think there's a, a a need to clarify the meets and bounds, no? uh, whether in the law or through the IRR, because uh, uh, I'm reading the law right now. It, it has, um, so the common understanding are the where is the zone? No, is it only part of the town or is it the entire town? Um, so uh, in the law, it's uh, only pertain to uh, cultural properties or historical landmarks. But as to the area itself, uh, it's not so clear uh, where is the area. So with, with NCCA's comment earlier, is there a need to define it? Or is there a need to at least uh, authorize uh, the Sangunian? Because here you're authorizing the Sangunian or directing the Sangunian to come up with a uh, ordinance no, to operationalize this. But um, do we need to specify that the ordinance should also need should also specify the needs and bounds and put more detail? Uh, Mr. Chair, in, with regards to the other similar bills, uh, we've noticed that they have followed the the common provision of giving the power to determine the meets and bounds through with the local government unit. But I I think it would be also appreciated if the if the law can already state that the uh, municipal ordinance should specify the the meets and bounds of the heritage zone. When we say a heritage zone, it doesn't really uh, cover the whole town, but there it's only a, a specific area where significant clusters of buildings uh, needs additional protection. Because as mentioned by uh, Congressman Savellana, uh, the individual declaration for specific buildings should also be coupled by an additional layer of protection through the heritage zone. And the reason why uh, the local government unit is given that power, because at the level of the national cultural agencies, uh, we cannot uh, uh, prescribe or uh, uh, provide the limits, as, uh, the height limits of certain structures within uh, in, uh, in a certain municipality. And that, that's ex an exclusive authority that is vested to the local government unit. So in other words, uh, Charles, uh, the salient feature of the law uh, is uh, only revolves in two things. Number one is the declaration and the operationalization of that declaration. And number two, a possible funding from NCCA. Tapo mo ba? These yes, are yes, sir. important salient points, correct? Yes, sir. That's that's the, that's why the way I think that's the reason why for the National Museum also uh, on our part as we have expressed uh, when this was deliberated at the uh, in the House of Representatives, it's pretty much straightforward when it just provides that there will be a heritage zone subject to the to an uh, uh, identification of the beats and bounds to a municipal ordinance and uh, protection and funding. Okay. The, the, the meets and bounds is very important because the overarching goal of the bill is to protect historical and cultural integrity of the area. So it's an added layer of protection, correct? No? Yes, sir. 
uh, the, uh, the the protection is stricter in that sense. So I, I'm just thinking out loud. No, wouldn't uh, a declaration of the entire town uh, put the entire town into a very strict, um, uh, very strict criteria of protection? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, in prag uh, pragmatic sense, it's really not practical to declare the whole town to uh, the whole uh, municipality as part of a heritage zone because, of course, there are certain uh, portions of the municipality that where certain forms of development may be allowed. So you restrict only uh, relevant uh, areas in the in the municipality that would have uh, a, an impact or uh, that would probably uh, has uh, bearing on the protection of the individual cultural properties within within that cluster. Senator Binay, any comments? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, kasi yung bill din nakasulat um, a heritage zone. So, uh, well, ang perception ko is parang isang uh, area to dun sa municipality. Pero paano kunyari yung mga structure, hindi dikit-dikit, uh, uh, maybe it is part of three different barangays. Pa, ano pa rin ba yun? Uh, ang treatment din ba nun is one heritage zone or three different heritage zones? Uh, kay, kay Charles. Uh, Senator Binay, I, as far as I can recall, and Congressman Savellano can confirm this, uh, I recall that the significant buildings in San Vicente are in close proximity with each other. Uh, as, as far as I can remember, when uh, Director General Barnes also convened the panel of experts last year where I was able to participate, the, the significant properties would uh, revolve near the, the church in the main town area. So somehow it's easier uh, for the municipal government to uh, determine the extent of the heritage zone. So, pero Charles, pagkaintindi ko, hindi lang uh, structural properties yung gustong ma-preserve with these heritage zones. Eh. Parang, parang may intangibles din ata or uh, parang may mga ganun na kailangan preserve that may not necessarily be within uh, that uh, <coughs> cultural properties. So, paano, yung, paano natin makakapture yun? For example, yung pottery na nabanggit kanina ni Kong Divi may be located uh, away from the church. But we also want to protect that. Uh, Ma'am, in the current definition of a heritage soul, it makes no mention of uh, uh, it being a contiguous area. You know? So uh, the way we can interpret it is that it doesn't necessarily have to be contiguous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Charles. Charles, I have a few more questions, but let's call on the other resource persons. Uh, Mayor uh, Tabanda of uh, San Vicente, rep represented by Christine Remulat. Remular. I'm Christine. Administrator Christina Regular, and in support of the proposition of our honorable Congressman Dipi Sabeliano, LDU San Vicente is in favor also declaring that San Vicente Long Shore will be considered also as one of the heritage city near Metro Vigan. But there was a query with regards to the title about the whole town of San Vicente, whether it will be called a heritage town or a heritage zone. Majority of the historical properties are found in Poblacion San Vicente Sur, like the first 
uh, part of the Paris Church, known as the Miraculous Church of the Prophets of Ilocosur, where sick people come and make their promises or panata to our patron saint and all were granted. And also, San Vicente is also known where there are famous sculptures in King Saints. Another is, we have also the furniture making, where in the old style of furniture can be seen by Sir D.P. mentioned the while ago about also the handicrafts, furniture making. The second one is we have the building located at the San Vicente Integrated School or in the, known as the first capilla where people during the early times went there and asked for God's assistance. We have also the Asilo de San Vicente of the Archdiocese of Neva Segovia known as the first governador's And until now, this is still existing. Another one is our own municipal hall. The local government of San Vicente is designed as an Spanish architectural design, sir. So you were talking a while ago whether the whole town of San Vicente will be declared as the heritage city, but since Sir NCAA Awala stated that there should also be bounds and limits to identify those popular properties. Could you have taken sir that the San Cunyan Bayan of San Vicente will try Um, Ma'am, you're uh, choppy. Okay, we'll go back to the LGU later on. Uh, we'll call on the uh, National Historical Commission on the Philippines, Brigadier General. <coughs> Sir? NHCP? <coughs> we call on NHTP, ma'am, for comments. You're on mute, ma'am. Ma'am Valerio. Ma'am, we cannot hear you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, sir, no. can you hear me, po? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay, okay, po. Okay, uh, in his, uh, as per practice, po, in establishing the Heritage Center or Historic Town Center, we always uh, establish the meets and bounds of a particular area so that, uh, as mentioned, ya kanina ni Mr. Charles, it is very impractical for uh, declaration of the entire town because uh, we all of the the entire town will be subjected to the uh, restrictions po unlike in establishing the particular heritage zone we're in my uh, established po natin dito yung core zone and buffer zone of the site now for the, the structures which are out of this heritage zone uh, another protections will be ano po covered into that uh, bali i-mention lang po yon yung particular site dun sa declaration na nung outside heritage zone so as to be protected po. Yun po yung ano natin. That's why, uh, and later on, it is the local government po kasi ang magpo-protect nun. So, uh, as mentioned by Charles uh, kanina, that um, 
there will be a height restrictions and uh, design restrictions on the particular historic uh, uh, her or heritage zones which will be affected or which will be covered by this uh, ano po, uh, declaration. Yun po yung magiging ano nun. So that's why we need to establish po yung heritage zone. Yung meets and bounds. By practice, so the uh, local uh, sanggunian is empowered to determine the meets and bounds after the law? Yes, ma uh, yes uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is the because uh, after the ano po, after the declaration, it will be the local government to monitor and uh, will create an implementing rules and regula regulations which will be applied to the particular ano po, uh, uh, heritage uh, to the particular declared heritage zones and structure. Uh, Sites and structures. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Uh, we again call on the uh, local government of San Vicente. Mr. Chair. Yes, Senator B9. Um, can we just request from the LGU of San Vicente? Kasi alam naman natin na hindi tayo makakabisita or makakapasyon ngayon dito sa San Vicente. If they can provide the committee uh, pictures of uh, yung potential area where uh, they plan to declare it as a heritage zone. Yes, uh, Senator Bernal. Go ahead po, NACP. Yeah, uh, that's why um, dun po sa, ano, as mentioned kanina, the local government all uh, or the and the NCCA and National Museum already established the important historic sites and structures within the town. No, uh, maybe uh, to in order for us to establish which are the core zone and buffer zone of the declared heritage zone, it is important for them to submit to us the cultural mapping that they uh, no, that they created so as to establish where are the meets and bounds of those particular uh, heritage zones. In po. So, Chair, magba kasi National Museum can provide us dun sa uh, pictures nung ano, nung diniklare nyo, uh, ano ba diniklare nyo? Cultural, ano, National Cultural Treasures ba? Treasures. Ano yung mga de declarations sa ginawa ng National Museum? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Sorry. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Attorney Tirol po, National Museum. Um, uh, I'd like to go back to Senator B. Nice query earlier, no? I think the concern is paano yung intangibles? And how do we uh, define the area, no? to make sure that even those intangibles or social uh, cultural uh, value of the property is also protected. So if you look at uh, Republic Act 100, 166, we don't push um, under Section 13, no? But basically, the, the responsibility to maintain uh, is uh, relegated or devolved upon the local government unit. Uh, then again, Tama po yung NHCP and also Charles na uh, yung meets and bounds will be um, upon the authority of the local government really to determine if these um, intangible practices are embraced within the area. Kasi for NCCA and of course the National Museum, yung declaration namin will only cover uh, structures. Um, Practices naman, we just simply document, but I think the reg reg regulation and registration of that now belongs to NCCA. In any case, yung protection po, uh, I think it is also a concern of ours. Um, uh, a safeguard is al already provided under letter C of section 13, RA 166, and Jan Um Local government units shall document and sustain all social cultural practices. Um, so, nasa LGU po yung responsibility. Now, um, sa request po ni Senator Binay, yes, we will supply all the photos 
and um, the identi uh, identification of all structures that we declared last year. So meron tayong uh, national cultural treasures and also yung second level na important cultural property. So yes po, um, if you can give us uh, until tomorrow, we will submit uh, before the committee the request, the photos and also the specific um, uh, level of declaration that we, we gave to those properties within the proposed heritage zone. Po. Thank you. pictures uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, hindi ako, hindi ako naka, hindi, hindi, ako, hindi ako techie. If anyone has pictures, we can uh, show it, we can show it now. Okay, so, maybe National Museum or National okay. Heritage, you have any pictures to show, to share? Um, Give me, Sir Chair, Um, how about, give me mga 10 minutes, I'll run to our, <laughs> to the other division and, uh, Get a copy, po. So I uh, can flash something. Actually, it's all online. Oh, Adaling i Google, kasi si Katabayan yan. Some photos are there, pero yung. Yung more old, uh, old pictures, wala eh. So then, son. Apo. Yeah, but. Yes, some yeah. photos, po. You can uh, just. Yes, Mr. Chairman, pwede din kaya malaman from NHCP, National Museum, or even NCCE kung gaano kalaki na yung suporta na binigay nila sa San Vicente to preserve itong uh, heritage sites nila kung meron or wala pa Hindi na yun sa director too any one of the cultural agencies kasi for example yung cultural mapping I think NCCA has a program kung sa tinuturuan nila yung LGU or kung paano mag magconduct ng cultural mapping I don't know kung naging beneficiary na ang San Vicente dun sa mga existing programs ng cultural agencies natin Madam Chair uh, Madam uh, Mr. Chair Madam uh, Nancy Yung sa cultural mapping, it was done uh, by my office when I was a governor. So, yun ang naging basis namin. Then, uh, ang National Museum, they're now uh, looking into, uh, I think, five structures na yung uh, na-identify. Which are they going to help? Even DepEd, uh, nakipagtulungan din kami. Kasi ginag ginawa namin interagency. Yung, uh, yung tulungan. It's a convergence. So... Even DPWH, they're now going to restore also yung uh, Las Nin eh, Escuela de Las Niños or something. So, yun yung mga nangyayari ngayon doon. And, uh, and uh, with the support of the uh, LGU of San Diego. Uh, congrats, Kong DV, because uh, katulad na nabanggit ni San Aini kanina, this is a fifth-class municipality kung walang convergence yung mga national agencies natin. I don't think may hirapan silang maging successful yung uh, conservation efforts nila. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, uh, Mr. Chair, yung uh, Municipality of San Vicente, gumagawa na rin silang uh, ng uh, San Vicente Conservation Council. Now, uh, unlike other conservation councils, uh, hindi sinasama yung mga, mga national agencies. But this time, we're now including the national agencies kasi talaga yung, sila yung panggagalingan ng support. Eh. Thank you, um, Kong, Nat, uh, Kong DV. Uh, talking about convergence, DOT is also here with us, the Department of Tourism. So we recognize uh, the representative of the DOT, Attorney uh, Viveka Lopez. DOT. Alam uh, Attorney Viveca Lopez, are you still there? Kung wala ni Pampo, we recognize TBM. Mr. Chair? Yes. Makisingit na lang ako. Uh, <clears throat> what we have done also for the barangay, we have a, a barangay uh, strategy, uh, the development strategic planning. So, Yung mga, uh, the people in the barangay, they know already yung mga, yung mga uh, what uh, can be done in their barangay. So, 
uh, sariling sikap gan ko namin yon. It's a farm tourism, uh, concentrating on farm tourism. And I can give you copies of that also, Mr. Chair, para, para siguro we can adapt uh, sa mga barangay natin. Uh, DOT? Kung wala na po, DBM? Any representative from DBM? Ah, uh, okay. Wala. DBM is uh, not here. Um, I just want to go back to uh, sa NH, uh, sa NCCA. Um, in the law, uh, it's specified here, Article 2, Section 3Q, and Article 4, Section 12, and Section 13 of Republic Act 166. Uh, it should be under that law, uh, Charles. Uh, well, how do you define the heritage zone under that law? Because we're adopting the definition to San Vicente, correct? Yes, sir. So, ano yung definition niya and what are the protections that are imbued in that law? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, in RA 166, in Section 3, Heritage Zone is uh, defined as uh, historical, anthropological, archaeological, artistic, geographical areas, and settings that are culturally significant to the country is declared by the National Museum and or the National Historical Commission. The uh, our, uh, the process and the maintenance of heritage zones uh, are provided in Article 4, Sections 12 and 13. Uh, specifically, uh, Section 13 provides uh, the responsibilities of the local government unit in maintaining the heritage zone. So one, it's uh, it just has three responsibilities. One is implementation of adaptive reuse of cultural properties within that zone. The appearance of streets, parks, monuments, buildings, and natural bodies of waters, uh, canals, paths, and barangays within a locality shall be maintained as close to their appearance at the time the area was of most importance to Philippine history as determined by the National Historical Commission. And lastly, which was earlier mentioned by Attorney Tirol of the National Museum of the Philippines, local government units shall document and sustain all social cultural practices. So in other words, the local government will play a very big role in the protection and preservation. Yes, Mr. Chen, and that's what we really like with the that provision of the heritage zone because the uh, responsibility is devolved to the local government units and in contrast to the national cultural agencies, of course, our mandate is limited to culture, while at least at the, at the level of the local government unit, it has a integrated approach by which they can manage the heritage. So what the law is doing is just declaring uh, some parts of uh, San Vicente as heritage zones. But the responsibility uh, or a large part of the responsibility will fall under the uh, responsibility, will fall under the powers of the local government unit. Yes, Mr. Chair. And I think the inclusion of the responsibilities of the national cultural agencies was is also aligned with what were being raised earlier by Congressman Savellano and Senator Mark was that the, as a fifth class municipality also okay. needs support some of the national aid. Yes, yes, correct. All right, and then like uh, the DOT is already here, Attorney uh, Lopez. Attorney Lopez. Kung wala ni Mampa, we call again the, the local government unit because they were cut. The LGU, San Vicente. They were here earlier, I saw them, but they were, uh, they disappeared again. Yeah, yeah. LGU San Vicente. Ma'am, naputol ko kayo kanina. You're on mute po, you're on mute. 
Ma'am, you're on mute. Um, you're, you're on mute. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Paul. Um, may we just request the local government to send us a position paper? Because we cannot hear you, Paul. Eh? It's, it's just choppy. No, Paki, just send us a position paper. Can you hear us? Ma'am? Okay. Yeah, hindi namin kay ma Ah, okay. Okay. So just send us a position paper, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I don't have any more uh, questions. And uh, may we request uh, our... Uh, senators to move for its uh, adoption and uh, to refer it to plenary. Thank you very much. And with that, I move, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the uh, bill from uh, Congressman uh, Savillano should be approved. I second, Mr. Chairman. Right there, uh, uh, the committee approves uh, House Bill uh, 7927. Uh, and uh, the committee um, uh, is endorsing uh, the said bill for plenary uh, adoption. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Aimee, and Madam Nasi, and to my colleagues, and to everyone. Thank you very much. And lastly, uh, Senate, uh, Senator, wait, baka lang ang hell ako. Congressman Rufus, thank you for uh, bearing with us. Uh, all the way to the end, but thank you very much, and I'm, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I just wanted to dispense all of the uh, ministerial matters. But uh, we, we now go to um, House Bill uh, 5643, uh, and the title of this bill is An Act Declaring the Cagayan de Oro River and its immediate environs located in Cagayan de Oro City, province of Misamis Oriental, a cultural heritage zone. So the same uh, concept, except this is uh, a river uh, that we are declaring a cultural heritage zone. Uh, we already conducted a hearing um, last year, uh, and we uh, uh, requested, of course, Congressman Rufus to sponsor the bill. We also requested uh, several of the government agencies to comment on the bill. However, um, uh, while we were uh, drafting the committee report, we also received uh, a letter coming from uh, the different uh, renewable energy uh, companies operating in Cagayan de Oro River. And uh, just to accord them with, um, uh, with uh, fairness and uh, respect, uh, we didn't have necessary to conduct another hearing just to put it on record and to uh, to uh, discuss any issues that uh, will any issues that might come up uh, in the approval of this measure. So we invited um, uh, Bukidnon Hydro Elect Bukidnon Hydro Energy Corporation, represented by Mr. Uh, Francisco Tiu Laurel, and uh, we will just go into the discussion of the businesses and renewable energy companies that are operating in, in that uh, stretch of the river so that we will understand uh, how this law might affect you know, their bill and how we can um, uh, uh, improve on the bill and make sure that uh, uh, this type of operation will not be uh, uh, gravely affected. So we will, uh, and Kong Rufus, any opening statements, Bob? Before we call on the resource persons, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Chairman uh, uh, Win Kachalian, and uh, I'm happy to also see uh, Honorable Senator uh, Amy Marcos and uh, Senator Nancy uh, Binay. 
and all our uh, our resource persons. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this river is very historical. Uh, the river, Mr. Chairman, in the in the banks of the river, is are found the Huluga caves, caves one and Huluga one and two. And this Huluga cave was uh, inhabited and by uh, early Cagayanons way back to uh, the uh, late Neolithic period and early Middle Age, which is about uh, 500 years before Christ, so 2,500 years ago. And uh, indeed, uh, in this uh, near the Huluga Caves in the Barangay in the Hag, that's upper Cagayandi or upstream of our river, Mr. Chairman. We, uh, there were excavations, archeological uh, uh, excavations by Sega University, its history department, archaeological department, and the uh, UP archaeology uh, department, and uh, it was it was found out and it was reported that uh, indeed uh, we saw there uh, obsidian, obsidian glass, which is a, a a product of an explosion of a volcano of a volcano, and there are no volcanoes in uh, in that part of our country, and so also they found the ceramic uh, shards which uh, was carbon dated to have come from the Song and the Ming dynasty, uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, these were found there. So there has been habitation there by early Kagaya Anons. And then 1622, through the river, the uh, recollects came, Mr. Chairman, from uh, the first evangelization of Mindanao happened in Caraga. And from Caraga, the town of Caraga, which is now in Davao Oriental, they went to Atanda, they went to Surigao City, and then they went to Butuan, and they went to Cagayan de Oro, 1622. And it was through this river that they came in. And uh, this river, uh, this is where uh, also uh, the Moro raids uh, came. And we have a variant, uh, Sakota, who, who protected the Jin states, protected uh, Cagayan de Oro. That was 1622 and the Spanish period. Then fast forward to 1901, Macambos Cave, which is found along the bank of the river in uh, Barangay Mambuaya, Upper Cagayan de Oro. Mr. Chairman, here was the first significant victory of Filipino nationalist forces against American colonial rule. And here nine Americans died only one Filipino, Cagayanon, died. And so this is celebrated. This also marked the historical marker by the National Historical Commission because we resisted American rule. And many of our Filipinos, of Cagayanos, died in other battles. But in Macahambos battle, Macahambos Cape battle, which is along the river, uh, the Americans lost terribly there one of the few significant victories we had against the uh, heavily armed, uh, modernized American forces. And so, Mr. Chairman, th that is uh, the situation as far as history, archaeology is concerned. Now, on ecology, this is a Class A river, Mr. Chairman. One of the few remaining Class A rivers of our country, was certified too by the DNR. And Mr. Chairman, because this is a very pristine river, and Class A. We have our whitewater rafting. This is the number one tourist attraction of the city of Golden Friendship, Cagayan de Oro. The only, it's only now during the pandemic that this has been stopped. But, you know, even foreigners know about this and they fly to Cagayan de Oro. Domestic, our own Filipino people go there. Uh, thousands and thousands have already been able to have the whitewater rafting of Cagayan de Oro River. And so we are saying that this is a cultural zone because it has history, it has culture, it has the early, early civilization in, that, in the river, it has the historical fight against the Moro Muslim raids, and also the fight against the Americans. And it was also in these areas during the Japanese period that the evacuation of 1942 when the Japanese came to Cagayan de Oro was in the areas of the barangays along the river of Cagayan de Oro. So these are the reasons why, Mr. Chairman, we filed this House bill 
to be able to protect this for the heritage of not only our children, for our children's children and the generations to come. And that is why this has given me the impetus to file this bill, and it has hurdled the House of Representatives with the support of the national agencies. And so I am ready, of course, to hear. I am very glad that you have given chance to other stakeholders to be present and to be able to clarify uh, the effects of this bill. So, Mr. Chairman, I turn this over back to you so that we can hear the other stakeholders' comments on House Bill uh, 5643. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman, Senators Binay, and also Marcos. Thank you, Chair Wing. Thank you. Thank you, Kong uh, Rufus. Now we call on uh, the representative of uh, Field Hydro, Attorney uh, Don Villanueva. <coughs> Attorney Villanueva. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm from the Department of Energy and uh, not from Phil Hydro. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, who, is, who is the representative of uh, Phil Hydro? Hello. Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm Trixie Roque, um, representing Phil Hydro. Sorry, sir. Yes. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah. We're just here to, like, um, and good morning also to um, Congressman Rufus. Um, uh, I'm Trixie. I used to work with uh, Philippi Philippine National Oil Company, EDC, and I've been in the. Where, where my wife. Uh, yeah. Before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you, Trixie. Yes. Yeah, Trixie, I, I guess Trixie. we've met before <laughs> during those sure. days. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I've been an advocate really of renewable energy and specifically hydro. So um, I would just like to share that um, Phil Hydro has been a constant and dependable partner and contributor to the Philippine economy and through the development of uh, re reliable, clean, indigenous and sustainable hydropower plants and facilities. So um, I would like to convey that we believe that hydropower development activities and operations, in fact, complements po your bill through long-term and comprehensive watershed management and biodiversity programs, which we really strictly adhere to and we comply with various um, environmental policies and regulations prescribed by DNR. So um, it was uh, hydropower development and operation po are proven as sustainable form of development and can coexist with other, other development or any conservation activities in the river. Thus, um, yung promotion of coexistence of development activities must be upheld. However, po, yung hydropower plants can even, uh, I mean, moreover, to, to add on to that, we can even attract tourists at the same time, educate and encourage environmentally responsible behavior of visitors. So um, in, the, in view of this, po, um, we fill hydro. We are the association of uh, run of river developers. Um, in we are one with your bill uh, in the goal of conserving and preserving Cagayan de Oro River. Po. So again, we're grateful um, that uh, uh, and also um, you could also rely on us as your your partner in your advocacy. Po. So we just wanted to yeah convey that um, to the to the body. Po. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Trixie, uh, do you have any member uh, companies yeah. operating along the Cagayan River? Yeah, um, actually you mentioned earlier Bukidnan Hydro Energy, um, whose president is uh, uh, Mr. Chu Laurel. Um, his, uh, I think he's represented here. I don't know if uh, I guess he also wanted to to convey his their uh, position. Uh, uh, Attorney Alvin. Uh, good morning. Yeah, we recognize uh, Attorney uh, Lanba of uh, Bukidnon Hydro. 
Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, good morning, Congressman Rufus. Uh, we thank you for having us uh, here in this committee hearing. Uh, uh, Mr. Tiu Laurel, the president of Bukidnon Hydro, unfortunately could not attend. So I am representing him and the company. Um, we are a member of Phil Hydro Association and we support the position of Phil Hydro in this um, bill. And we welcome this bill as it will also add value to the Cagayan de Oro River, especially for the cultural and tourism aspect. The run of river of our, pro of our company um, supports this uh, bill, Your Honors. In other words, uh, because you sent us a position and uh, your position paper contained uh, a few suggestions, no? Um, but your suggestion actually does not pertain to a uh, blanket support to the bill. So I'm confused with your comments right now. You're saying you support the bill, but your position paper tried a few amendments. Uh, yes, Your Honor, if I may explain. Uh, we support the bill in general. However, we'd like to suggest a few points on the bill to, to, to be considered by this body. Um, number one, we would like to point out that uh, if there is a government agency which approves a project on the river like the DOE, we hope that the... Uh, permit given by the DOE will will not will be respected and will be recognized because this has already been part uh, prior to this bill. Yeah, but uh, from my reading of the bill, it doesn't uh, trample on any of the existing uh, 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 approval. I think the basic question here is for. Is your power plant covered by this bill? Uh, our project site is along the Cagayan de Oro River, Your Honor. That's why if it could be specified to be clear so that there will be no room for interpretation in the future, that if there is a project which has already been approved by a government agency like the DOE, um, this will be given due course if the bill is uh, uh is enacted, Your Honor. We just want it to be clarified. Your plant is in the Oro City or is it in Bukidnon? Uh, Your Honor, it's in Talakag, municipality of Talakag, province of Bukidnon. Okay. And uh, uh, which provision of the bill do you think might affect your operations? Uh, Your Honor, there is a provision which state that uh, uh, there is a provision wherein government agencies are required to promulgate rules and regulations, specifically Section 8. Uh, we hope that the DOE should be considered in this in this provision. Okay. Because the reason why I ask that because I read the bill again, and I don't see anything that will impede your operations, no? Because typically, is protecting river from pollutants, from uh, from anything that will uh, destroy archaeological, historical, and cultural values. So, as long as your my my reading here is as long as the is not destroying anything or not polluting, which runs contrary to RE, you know, to renewable energy, then the law will not impede the, the power plant. Uh, yes, uh, we agree, Your Honor. Uh, but our position is a suggestion that DOE should be included because uh, we, are, we have a service contract with DOE and the DOE might have some points regarding the utilization of the river. So that's our suggestion, Your Honor. Okay. Any, uh, any more suggestion, uh, Attorney? 
Uh, Your Honor, one of our points in the position paper is to delineate the exact um, meets and bounds of the Cagayan de Oro River, if this is possible, Your Honor, because we notice that in the innate NIPAS Act, the meets and bounds of the protected area are delineated. Hmm. So if this is all possible as part of the bill. Um, I don't know if you, you were listening earlier, no, in the uh, Ilocos uh, San Jose, uh, San Vicente Heritage Zone. But uh, it's always been uh, delegated to LGUs, in this case to DNR, to craft the meets and bounds. No? Um, so going by that uh, process, uh, the bill is uh, compliant to that process. No? Because I looked at the car car bill, I looked at the and the Vicente bill and also this bill, everything is delegated to an implementing agency. Uh, oh, Your Honor, we submit to that. Uh, but, uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to elicit from you is, assuming no, the meets and bounds, assuming lang, the meets and bounds will cover, and it will probably cover the hydro, is there anything in the bill that can affect your operations? Uh, none, Your Honor. Uh, for the meets and bounds, we just uh, noticed that for purposes of clarity, assuming that the project straddles on the meets and bounds of it so that there will be no issue, Your Honor. But uh, we submit, Your Honor. Uh, what we can do, Kong Rufus, if you're uh, with, with the permission of Kong Rufus, of course, is to have a more inclusive uh, uh, process on the determination of the meets and bounds. Maybe in other agencies. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yes, first let me thank, uh, you know, I, I've heard uh, Trixie uh, I would be able to tell my wife, Nenen, that uh, we met on Zoom and uh, she has retired and you've also gone on with uh, representing the field uh, uh, hydro. So uh, thank you for your suggestions and for your support because certainly we are going to coordinate with you. The DOT and the DNR will coordinate with field hydro. The best way to do to be able to have good run of river mills is to replant the entire area. The environs of the mill, that is the way to conserve uh, more water. If this is already denuded, if our river is denuded, it will have less water and less hydro resources. And that is why I thank Trixie for that. And now I'd like to go also and thank Attorney Alvin John uh, for uh, giving his concerns because the purpose of our bills is to make sure that uh, all the interests and stakeholders will be heard and to assure them that it will not in any way be inimical to them. Now, let us go one by one, Mr. Chairman, because he has uh, stated about first. The bill is clearly, Mr. Chairman, limited only to Cagayan de Oro and its environs. In other words, very, very clear, I will read to you now uh, Section 3. The Cagayan de Oro River and its immediate environs located in Cagayan de Oro City province of Misa, Mr. Oriental, never is this envisioned to interfere with their uh, uh, their plant, the Bukidnon power plant, in uh, in the hub, in the hub is in Bukidnon. So totally, they're out of our of this jurisdiction as far as having the meets of meets and bounds. The meets and bounds will be starting from Dansulihon. That's the last barangay on our side from Bukidnon because the next one will be Talakad. So it will not overreach. It will not reach Talakad. This is mainly. Cagayan de Oro, and I saw that we put it there because precisely it's difficult to coordinate to, ha to the upland uh, 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 municipalities higher than Cagayan de Oro. So clearly, the meets and bounds will not affect the Bukidnon uh, power plant because uh, very clear from the law, uh, Attorney Balagbag, have you seen that? Section yes. 3? Only Cagayan de Oro River, its environs located in Cagayan de Oro City. Okay, now, so that's very clear. But because it's a possibility that there might be others that will be able to put up, uh, you know, hydro plants also in that area, I am I accept the suggestion of the, the Balagbag to include the DOE in the list of those according to Section uh, 8. Yes, 
uh, I don't see any harm. And in fact, it will improve my bill if after uh, the national offices here, after we DNR, we can put the, the uh, yes, in the hierarchy here. It will be after DNR. The DOE will be included. So we accept that, Mr. Chairman. So we have answered, therefore, the concerns of the permit. Uh, permits given outside of Kage and Yaro, we have no problem. So you have been given permit. And it does not have to state here, Panyero, you are also a very good lawyer, as I can hear, hear you. Laws are prospective. It can never be retroactive. If it is retroactive, then it will become a ex post facto bill, and which is denied by allowed, it's not allowed by the Constitution. So whatever has been there already cannot be touched by the uh, by this bill because you have already been, unless you are going to violate existing laws. And the reason there why we are also concerned about you, because once you are going to discharge influence to the river, we are going to go against your neck. We are going to make sure that we are going to cancel your Bukidnon hydropower plant. Because the, uh, the Kagi and the Oro River gets its water from the Talakag River, Bambubunawan River, and as sure, if you are sure, because I have talked to Mr. Laurel, and you know, you have a very highly sophisticated system of not discharging influence to the Kagyan River. Do you confirm what Mr. Laurel told me? That uh, this is a very safe uh, uh, process and it will not destroy our class A river, especially because once it is destroyed, livelihood of no less than 120 uh, uh, water rafters, uh, 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 guides will be lost. And of course, the other downstream uh, industry. Are you going to confirm to us now that the Bukidnon Hydro will not destroy Kage and Yorim, its, its environs? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we confirm that it will not destroy. In fact, we welcome this bill. I am also a fan of whitewater rafting yeah. in CDO, actually. So we are uh, we are supportive of this, Your Honor. Uh, for yeah. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Chairman, it has been, uh, you know, I have talked to Mr. Laurel because I am a congressman who listens to everybody, just like Senator Wynn. And of course, Chairman Wynn and Senator Aimee and Senator Nancy. We always hear. So when uh, I was texted by Mr. Laurel, I talked I talk to him. And in fact, I asked him to get from the Kagi and the Oro River Basin Authority, uh, River Basin Council, which is said that by Bishop of Kagendi Oro at the time, who is uh, Monsignor Ledesma, uh, to, to get their 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 approval. And they, you, you were approved by the Kagendi Oro River Council because you went into that process even before you got your permit. And they saw no problem with your system, with your company. So I didn't see any problem. So uh, that is why, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, uh, we will, uh, as far as meet and bounds, clear. You know, my, my cousin here, uh, ARD Aldrich Resma, is here. So DNR ito, they are going to be given the power to to put the miss and bounce. Uh, uh, ARD Aldrich, with the permission of the chair, can I ask him that he will have the miss and, miss and bounce only in Cagayan de Oro City from our farthest barangay down to the sea, to the mouth of Cagayan de Oro River. Is that confirmed, Mr. Chairman? Can we ask my uh, cousin, the ARD of uh, DNR, to confirm that you are not going to reach the Bukidnon Hydro, huh? In Talakag. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Resma. Unmute yourself, uh, Aldrich. You are still muted. Okay. Good afternoon, Con. Oh, good morning, Con, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, the, the proposed bill is within Kagayan de Oro River Basin. Uh, part of Kagayan de Oro City. So you are not going to make to, to go to Talakag, won't you? Will you? Uh, no, no. Oh, you it's only in, no, it's only in Kagayan de Oro. Yes. So, uh, Attorney Balagbag, you are safe uh, as far as uh, your uh, your uh, present plant is concerned. But again, make sure that effluents that are dangerous to life will not flow down to us in Kagayan de Oro River. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have now clarified uh, mission bounds clearly. Again, the Oro River only. 
the request of Attorney Balabag is very, very reasonable. They are going to include DOE. And so the Department of uh, uh, Tourism will have to consult with all this uh, mentioned. And I'd like to also make sure that uh, Trixie will be invited. Uh, DNR, can you invite uh, Trixie uh, to your meetings, including the Department of Tourism, when you have the meets and bounds and you prepare the development plans for this? Because we want, all of us want to help our river. It's still a Class A river. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recognize uh, Ms. Trixie. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Kong Rufus, for that. Um, I'd just like to share maybe um, in coordination perhaps also with DOE because I heard that there are also plants. Um, there were also hydro service contracts approved um, in the CDO area. Although you've already said that um, it's prospective and it's open to hydro since um, the watershed will in fact be managed with a hydropower development. But I'd um, just like to... Um, just note that there are uh, some other projects that uh, look a smaller run of river located um, in the Cagayan de Oro portion. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for also including me in those um, activities. Yeah, well appreciated, Bob. We call on the Department of Energy, represented by uh, Attorney Don Villanueva. Uh, Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chair. We we appreciate the opportunity uh, to provide our inputs on this uh, important bill. Uh, we support the purposes of the bill as, uh, as stated by uh, Congressman Rodriguez. Uh, we need to, at this point, we need to uh, refer the, the matter to some of our other bureaus, particularly the... Uh, Renewable Energy Management Bureau for, for their comments and uh, inputs. And uh, we would like to ask for time to uh, get their comments and uh, consolidate them for the approval of our principal. Uh, attorney, yes, we will give you time, but uh, let's do it uh, ASAP. Uh, as I understand it, uh, there is no operation within the Cagayan de Oro Basin. However, according to uh, Ms. Trixie, there were service contracts that were issued. You know? So uh, I just want to uh, uh, get your comments on this interplay. And uh, yes, we will give you um, ample time to uh, comment, but uh, please do it uh, as soon as possible because we want to get this bill um, uh, approved, uh, hopefully before uh, we, we, we take a long break. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, that is well taken. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I'd like to ask if uh, they have given permits uh, within the uh, Cagayan de Oro jurisdiction of some other uh, uh, power uh, generating plants. And we know what are these plants that they have applied for, which is found in our in Cagayan de Oro city itself, not in Bukidna, from the DOE. Uh, Mr. Villanueva. Uh, uh, yes, uh, sir. Uh, we will uh, get the information from the Hydropower and Ocean Energy Management Division and we will submit it together with our comments on your bill. Yes. If that is okay, be assured. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That'll be okay. Be assured, uh, Mr. Villanueva, that precisely uh, the uh, whatever plans they will have made by the Department of uh, Tourism and the DNR should be able to get you, the DOE, on board because uh, we do not want to be able to stop development, for example, of Land of River. And this is a, this is a river, as long as uh, we are assured, and we are always assured, that the kind of plants you're going to place there will not pollute the Class A Cagayan de Oro River. So uh, we, we will expect your uh, report uh, to the committee, and I will be asking a copy from the committee on what are the applications or the approvals of uh, hydro run of river uh, projects in Cagayan de Oro City, huh? from beginning from uh, our our boundary from Talakad, so that we will also know. I would like to know who are those going to apply there, so that we can also uh, be able to touch with uh, touch base with them to make sure that their effluence, the discharge 
of this uh, run of river will not uh, endanger the lives of uh, our guests who will take whitewater rafting and also those in the in the city itself. So uh, thank you for that, Mr. Villanueva. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Department of Tourism is requesting to be recognized. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, I Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I apologize for the internet connection problem earlier, and if I may be allowed to keep my video off to help my internet connection stabilize. Po. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, um, I, I would like to manifest on behalf of the Department of Tourism um, its support uh, to the proposed measure, especially because it is parallel uh, with one of the ob objectives of the DOT, which is to encourage activities and programs which promote tourism awareness, preserve the country's diverse culture and heritage, and instill a sense of history and a culture of tourism among the youth and the populace. And um, um, and concomitant to this um, support, uh, we would like to interpose some clarifications on specifically on three points. Um, the first one uh, being on the matter of, of funding. Um, we would like to clarify if there would be any specification as to the source of funding for this endeavor. And um, in order to to make the the project or, or the endeavor itself feasible, also um, we would like to uh, recommend that the formulation of um, the proposed measure uh, be uh, be done in consideration of um, the Mandana's ruling, um, in order to uh, in order to note note as well that the basic services and facilities devolved to LGUs include tourism facilities promotion and development. Um, um, and with with regard to the leadership. Um, the proposed measure prudently assigned the mission to develop the subject area to concerned agencies that are well equipped for the task. Um, however, uh, may we uh, just ask for a clarification as to a specific body or entity that will lead these initiatives? Um, would there be a council or any any specific um, entity group of um, any specific entity that would be formed pursuant to this measure and um, what would be the composition and as well as the specific powers and functions and duties of of um, such a council should there, should there be one. And uh, lastly, as to the implementation, again, we would like to clarify if there would be a specific body or entity that would be identified to ensure the implementation of the provisions of um, the proposed measure. And uh, with that, with the foregoing comments and recommendations, the DOT strongly supports the enactment of the uh, proposed measure. Po. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Gong Rufus. Yeah, we thank the Department of Tourism for its endorsement of this. Now, they have a question specifically on budgetary uh, allocation and also the Mandana's ruling. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, it, it, it is very clear under Section 3 of this bill that the responsibility of implementing and putting up a priority development plan and its implementation is the Department of Tourism. We believe that, uh, you know, this is a project which involves... Uh, you know, the tourism of Cagayan de Oro and Region 10, that uh, it is something that they can be able to, to fund. That is why they are mandated, Mr. Chairman, to be accorded, it should be accorded priority development by the Department of Tourism in coordination with it. Of course, uh, we have also the city of Cagayan de Oro and so forth. The Manad Bandana's ruling does not in any way oust any jurisdiction of the Department of Tourism. It can continue to uh, fund projects which they believe are very vital to uh, our uh, country's uh, tourism. And uh, one, I would say that in Region 10, Cagayan uh, de Oro, Whitewater Rafting, is one of the primary tourist uh, attractions that we have. And in fact, that is why uh, we made tourism as, uh, as the lead agency here. And so uh, we will we will help in the uh, in the if there was this approved and there is a priority project plan we will ask for we will put uh, our uh, support in the national budget. 
Now, the Mandanas Garcia ruling certainly would increase by 28% of uh, the uh, local governments. That is the statement of the Bureau of Local Government Finance and the DBM. That there will be almost across the board increase from what you have now of the LGUs present. Uh, we don't call it anymore ERA, but because that has been declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, it's now called National Tax Allocation, uh, NTA, the Hindina IRA. So, uh, while well, there will be 28%, Mr. Chairman, tourism is certainly below the radar of any local government. They have to take care first of health, of education, and other very important projects, infrastructure. So that is why we are going to have this. We don't want to burden Kagayan de Oro. It's a big city. There's so, so many, many, many uh, responsibilities. So we want to put this in a national, national agency, commensurate to the kind of uh, river that we have that is giving tourism to our country, not only in Region 10, but the entire country. So it is clear that the budgetary here will be with the Department of Tourism Mr. Chairman. So that, that's why uh, that is the, it is there to, to clarify to Ms. Trixie. And I hope she will also support us in having, once we have a development plan, to be able to have that also financed, not on a immediate 100% uh, expense, but it can be over a period of time. Because uh, as we have seen, uh, the Mandana's ruling has reduced the budgets of our national agencies. But certainly, we believe that this can be handled very well, implemented and funded by the Department of uh, Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Pong Rufus. Uh, we'll take note of the comments of the DOT, uh, but uh, another resource person signified his intention to uh, uh, manifest some points. Uh, the Cagayan de Oro City, represented by Mr. Baklid. Sir? Are you still there? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon also to, to Senator Marcos and Senator Binay. Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Hilarion Baklig from the City Local Environment and Natural Resources Office of Cagayan de Oro. Uh, I would just like to make a, a small presentation on the overview of Cagayan de Oro River, uh, if I may be allowed, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I already have. I already sent my my presentation to the secretariat to please uh, show uh, on the screens. Hold on. Uh, um, we'll uh, we'll contact the. Um, okay. Okay, Mr. Chair. But. Uh, while yeah, waiting yeah. for the slides, uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Have it uh, with you. You can do a share presentation. Um, I I am using my phone. I I, I cannot uh, do it on my end. But uh, uh, nevertheless, yeah, Mr. Chair. I, yeah, nevertheless, I I will just describe Cagayan de Oro River. Uh, basically, Cagayan de Oro River is is not only uh, situated within Cagayan de Oro. Uh, it comprises of several municipalities along Bukidnon as well as Iligan. So uh, uh, the whole river basin uh, comprises a total land area of 138,730 hectares, to which Cagayan de Oro has only uh, 21,135 hectares. So the rest of that belongs to other municipalities in uh Bukidnon, namely Baungon, Libuna, Talakag, and, uh, and some parts in Iligan City as well, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's, that's, okay. uh, let's start from the beginning so we, you can uh, walk us through. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the second slide will show us the the map of Cagayan de Oro River. The, the blue lines uh, indicates Cagayan de Oro River. So the you can see it co it covers a lot of of municipalities especially in bukidnon mostly is is uh, situated in bukidnon the next slide would show us the next slide please would show us the sub watersheds 
of Cagayan de Oro River. There are eight. That is uh, Batang, Kalawaig, Pikalin, Pikutin, Bubunawan, Tagiti, Tumalaong, and Munigi. Uh, to which only Munigi uh, sub-watershed is situated within Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, next slide would show us the rainfall runoff uh, of the river. As you can see, it comes from uh, mostly from Bukidnon and Cagayan de Oro is basically the receiving end of, of the runoff water, especially during typhoons and uh, uh, rains. Next slide, please. So the head water source of Cagayan de Oro River comes from, mainly comes from Mount Kitanglad and Mount Kalatungan. Uh, it has an area, the Mount Kitanglad has an area of 47,270 hectares with an elevation of 2,950 meters. Uh, likewise, Mount Kalatungan has uh, 21,300 hectares with an elevation of 2,824 uh, meters. Next slide, please. So this is the, actually this is the uh, situation for, for Cagayan de Oro River. We are merely at the receiving end. So uh, during Typhoon Sendong, it, uh, that's why Cagayan de Oro was uh, really heavily affected because of the denuded uh, watersheds, uh, especially in Bukidnon. So what we are proposing to Congressman Rufus is that there is already a Cagayan de Oro River Management uh, Council. Now, it, it comprises of the, the whole watershed. And in fact, I believe there is already a uh, CDORB, CDO River uh, Basin Master Plan uh, already in place, which was already approved by the Regional Development Council. And as well as the DNR uh, Watershed Management Plan through their project INREM. Uh, I believe there was already, there is already a master plan in place for that. Uh, what we would like to request the Congressman Rufus is to include those master plans or those uh, development plans for Cagayan de Oro River for this uh, house bill for the institute uh, as likewise the institutionalization of the CDO RBMC, uh, Mr. Chair. Are you tapos uh, uh, Mr. Bambi? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's why we would like to request uh, Congressman Rufus if he would be amenable for the inclusion of the CDO RBMC and the development plans uh, already in place for Cagayan de Oro River, uh, River Basin. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, we, we thank uh, Mr. Buckley of the Environmental Office of the City Cagayan, definitely. And we can include in the section, Mr. Chairman, uh, the mention of the River Basin Authority. I am in touch with the officers of the River Basin Authority. And precisely, we have asked them to submit uh, a uh, proposal. And it's mainly that there should be coordination between the Department of, of Department of Tourism and the DNR with the River Basin Authority. This is headed by, as I mentioned earlier, by the Archbishop Cagayan de Oro. And of course, the Vice Chairman is from the city government. So I, have, I would certainly would like to include Mr. Chairman in the provisions of the development plan because here, uh, Mr. Buckley, we want the national government so that they didn't have a problem as a city to be able to finance the development here and give priority by the tourism. Uh, of course, if you can see here, uh, we have mentioned Cagayan de Oro City uh, here uh, in the uh, plan, in the priority development plan, the city government of Cagayan de Oro City and I would like to add here uh, the proposal of Mr. Buckley to add, to add here that uh, in coordination, in other words, the, the uh, tourism plan should always take into account the river basin uh, plan uh, that we have. So therefore, can we have the name of the, uh, the exact name uh, to be included from Mr. Buckley in this, uh, in section three, Mr. Chairman, after the city of Kagi Adli Oro and before and other concert agencies because we want this uh, that the that, that Department of Tourism to always take into consideration the plan and this will be a, uh, there will be convergence uh, between the protection now uh, the good thing is that the basin is has even higher than Cagayan de Oro but you know 
my bill will only be here because it's difficult also to be able to 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 have uh, the other places. Uh, so, uh, the, the, but they are in the basin. So, may we ask from Mr. Baklig what will be included on uh, Section 3? So that we mentioned, this is the Cagayan de Oro, CDO. Uh, uh, the Cagayan de Oro River Basin Management Council, uh, Congressman Rufus. Yeah, I will Management have Council. Yes. Management Council. Management. Yes. Thank Council. you. Thank you, Kong Rufus. Yes. So with that suggestion, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we would add in Section 3 uh, the, the, the following uh, uh, words. Uh, after the city of Cagayan de Oro, because when the DOT will plan this, it has to get the views of Cagayan de Oro City. And then comma, then the CDO River Basin Management Council and other concerned agencies. So we'll include this in the development plan so that there will be no plan which will not have the support of the uh, of the Cagayan de Oro River Basin Management Council. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Rufus, and thank you for keeping an open mind and uh, keeping a, an open uh, mind on the uh, suggestion of our uh, uh, various resource persons. Uh, with that, uh, we've exhausted all of our resource persons, uh, Kong Rufus. And uh, just as a last uh, question, Kong Rufus, and uh, a reiteration. So the bill, the bill just contemplates the river, Cagayan de Oro River, within the jurisdiction of Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. It, it will be difficult to coordinate with the other LGUs. Good that we have the city government, we are able to coordinate with them. But there are many others in Bukidno. And it's very, very, it goes all the way back to Mount uh, Itangla, the Mount Kaut uh, Balatungan. So we, we are there for, uh, well, if the congressmen of the other, uh, other uh, districts of Cagayan de Oro of of, of Bukidnon will be minded to also protect their areas, then uh, we will also help them. And so uh, this will just be here because we are also really protecting, Mr. Chairman, the cultural artifacts and the archaeological finds in the in the uh, banks of the river of Cagayan de Oro City. Thank you, Kong Rufus. With that, uh, with your kind understanding, we're going to subject the bill into a technical working group, uh, just a quick technical working group so that we can collate all the uh, position paper and then after that, we'll sponsor this to plenary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for that action. Thank you to Mr. Baklig, to uh, Trixie, and to uh, Tony Balagbag. I just got a text from uh, Mr. Laurel Frani uh, thanking me that, uh, you know, the suggestions of... Uh, the Kidnon power is uh, will be included certainly in my bill. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Attorney thank you. Balabag, Balagbag also. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kong Rufus. And uh, whenever I uh, listen to you, I uh, I'm, I'm reminded reminded of my uh, times in school. Parang nakikinig ako sa ko. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we uh, we, we really have research on. Kage and the history and the river and so forth. So I'm just sharing with you uh, what we as Kageanons have learned. And, uh, you know, this bill is about them. It's about protecting for them and the generations to come. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Chairman, to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, any last words, Senator Aimee? Um, thank you very much. And I'd just like to lend support for the effort of uh, Kong Rufus. Um, and uh, the others uh, involved in renewable energy, as uh, you know, Ilocos Norte has vast experience in that area. And as much as we want renewables, we do not want the effort for um, sustainable energy to result in natural uh, degradation. So uh, these things have to go hand in hand, progress together with our uh, environmentalism campaign. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, thank you, Senator Aimee. Thank you very much. Thank you. The manifestation of, of that support, Senator Aimee, is your windmill virtual picture at the back. You might not see it, but That's we correct. can see it. I forgot. I forgot. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. It's energy, yeah. So we, with that, I thank uh, Kong Rufus, and thank you, Kong Rufus, for your patience, for staying with us. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Aimee, also for staying with us.
And of course, I thank uh, everyone uh, for um, participating in this uh, hearing. Uh, we've exhausted everything. We've covered all the bills. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, um, we'll uh, just alert you if we need uh, more of your comments. So thank you very much. Uh, this meeting is now, this hearing is now adjourned. Thank you to all.